From formation to taxation, covering inflation, temptation, high expectations, and that dreaded stagnation, we bring to you Hit Nation. Hey everybody, welcome to episode seven of Hip Nation. It sounded like you were questioning that. <laughs> I was. I'm not quite sure what episode we're on anymore. <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah and we are doing an episode with one of the most amazing human beings on the planet, Chris Sigmuth, today about uh, business coaching. And I am Shay, as usual, still sitting here warming my chair, you know. <laughs> Uh, and we have Chris here to introduce oh, herself. Yes, hi. Thank you for having me, Chris Sigmuth, Sigmuth here. Um, good old Penticton, BC. <laughs> <laughs> Been out here working with the Okanagan Valley fo- business folks for about two and a half years now, and and just excited to be on the show here with uh, Sarah and Shay. So thanks for having me, guys. Oh, we're we're more than excited yes. to have you. <laughs> like literally, the finger maintenance. We're at like a ten. I was just so excited. Like, yes. Well, this episode's coming up. Yeah. Well, we'll tell you the. Fi- you'll see them. You'll see the finger ma- finger finger magnets throughout the show. You'll see her. Oh, except now they come with sound effects because oh. I've got these artificial nails from our gala from yesterday. Oh. And so now it's like, can you hear that? That is the most irritating sound in the world. <laughs> it's like I can do my subtle like finger magnets, but now they're now, amplified. Now everybody knows. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. And anyway. so um. Chris, mm-hmm. I'd like to also say that Chris is my business coach and um, my business would not be the success that it is without this woman. So um, it was a no brainer to have her on here to kind of talk a little bit about the things that she is a master at um, that will be incredibly valuable to anybody in the business world, I'm sure. So why don't you take it away and tell us what uh, what's the first thing you want to talk to us about today? <laughs> well, I, first off, very sweet. Thank you. Um, love being a part of this group. And I mean, I think back to the day we we met. I mean, it was a beautiful night. The stars were shining. I think we're at a six steps in Slackwater Brewery at that point in time. So that was our first meeting and, yep. and kind of led from there. So um, but I'm very thankful and grateful that uh, we we got that chance to meet and, and we're here today. So, yep. Um, Me too. You know, I, I understand the support and bright, but you you really did the work and all this, and and that's what makes someone. When I think of an ideal client, I mean you're an ideal A raving fan, and just so proud of you and what you've accomplished. So and what graphically hip is and shame what you've brought in. So just just want to put that out there. You guys are flipping amazing. Yeah. At what you're doing. So. Um, and by the way, I have to say that. It was like Chris's advice for me to hire you, Shay. Not like you particularly, but just to hire somebody. And so you like pretty much got your job here because of this woman. (laughs) Thank you. In more than one way. (laughs) I'm so appreciative. (laughs) Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, before we we kind of get into it too, I just want to say, you know, like the chamber last night, you had the gala Mm -hmm. event. You guys have been put on and been watching these social media, all the good things and I wasn't able to join you guys, but congratulations to you. That was amazing. You guys looked beautiful last (laughs) night. Um, While you guys were all celebrating the wins, which we like to call those i also was silently doing that um in the background i got to join um a kind of a sneak peek i have a girlfriend uh mary Ellen mason and her uh, business partner scott mcdermott and they're trying to create a warrior code retreat oh and so it's going to be penticton yukon mexico italy like a full wellness wow. retreat for a lot of great for business owners in in so so many sense so yeah. to step away um so i got a chance to really get into that we spent a lot of time in vision last night which was really cool so while you guys were all celebrating i was envisioning and oh, uh that's cool. working while they sleep yeah. right yeah. this is yeah. a, a thing that we talked about when kevin was on it's like work while they sleep or work yeah. while they party or whatever yeah. yeah yeah it was pretty cool so very cool it's something that they're coming coming to you some point in time but uh yeah um Happy to be here now today and, and get to talk more about vision. Absolutely. So vision is um it's I know you took me through my um vision 
Vivid Vision. Vivid Vision. Which is a for me, it was a three year business kind of vision of where I wanted things to go, and it hangs on my wall right outside this podcast room, actually. So I'm very excited to talk about this topic. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd like to actually we got to pull that baby down and see see where we land already. What's been checked off? The yeah, list here. there's some changes for sure, yeah. but <laughs> but a lot of it is still it's it's it was very insightful and helpful to kind of set those goals and decide like make those hard decisions of where do you want this to go that's right yeah yeah there's something we it's the the setting the RAS we call it the reticular <coughs> activating system which is the the brain's compass to where you want to go Ooh. and um big words yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah compass gps so i mean if we don't don't get me wrong we can get to the destination but we can take a lot of different ways to get there but by actually setting that you're going to find a, the brain's going to be looking for routes to get there in a quicker way so that's neat I like that. So if, yeah, it's it's really cool. If you think about when you like, maybe there's a vehicle. I mean, when I think of my truck, I'm like, I want a Ford truck. I want a gun rack. I want to lift it. I want the whole thing, right? And so nobody's got this color. Nobody's got these things. And all of a sudden, you start to see those trucks, and you're like, oh, oh, because the brain starts actually looking for what you want. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning and you're having, you're going to be like, I'm going to have a shitty day today. Your brain starts looking for every shitty thing there is. So let's just be clear. This is not the universe doing this. This is just like something the brain physiologically does. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm on board with this. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So be, you know, language is powerful. Thoughts so are powerful. Are there limits to this? Like, can you say, you know, you're like, I want to be like Jeff Bezos in like a couple of years and then just keep envisioning him. Well, don't envision him. Maybe that's a bad idea. <laughs> but like his lifestyle and stuff like that. Or do you want to make it more practical in your visions? Like, well, I think we all need that uh, big, hairy, audacious goal. Hmm. That that's a that's a no reason not to think outside of that. But that's going to continuously drive you towards it. You might not get there in two years. It might be ten yeah. years. Um, but there's nothing wrong with with going big. The moonshot. Ooh, Brilliant. the moonshot. <laughs> moonshot. That's so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, I mean, you know, before we, I, I mean, we'll get into vision. We're kind of already there, but just to kind of give you the action coach. And that's really the company that we work under at this point in time. It's that the company's been in business for over 27 years. Brad Sugar's created it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I work under the umbrella of Action Edge Business Coaching and uh, out of Calgary. And, and Jared, um, and Kevin are the partners out there. They have Calgary location, Canmore, and the Okanagan. Um, so but all this stuff actually comes from years of tried, tested, true, which is amazing. Absolutely. Um, it's pretty cool. So um, no, we don't, we don't like the box idea by any means, but definitely there are some ways to kind of strategically move through business and, and really understand it. So we start with six steps to massive results. So uh, more profits, more growth, um, because really being in business should give you more life according to Brad Sugars. <laughs> like more more like social life? Like what are we talking about? Like or balance more like energy? Or like, yeah. Because I've got none of the above. But <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, we're going to remove the, the word balance from the vocabulary. We're going to go with boundaries because Ooh. that's really the limiting piece here. Balance yeah. is just a fluffy word. I think we all like to throw around and yep. make us feel good that there's such a thing. But <laughs> boundaries. Oh. Yeah. So we'll yeah. talk about boundaries later. I like, <laughs> your, I like your style. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so... When we look at six steps, the the this is where we're going to spend most of our time today is is there's four, um, sorry, bottom mastery the foundation of the business itself. So thinking of a foundation of a home, if any of those pieces are not properly structured or using the right um, materials, that sort of stuff it can crumble. Mm -hmm. So and what those four things are in mastery are financial mastery. We have delivery mastery. We have destination mastery, and we have self mastery. Your time mastery. And those are all very key for things to, to really take a look at the business, where does it stand so far, or as you're building your own business at this point in time, that's where we're going to start to really okay. get set up. So we like to focus on, I want to I wanna focus on destination, since we're already talking about that. And um, also, I want to talk a little bit about time and self. Yeah, which are, it's like... Non-existent. Yeah, for both <laughs> of us, like for Shay and I personally, that's key right now mm -hmm. um, but also so important for any business out there or business owner I should say um, it's like we were just talking before we hit record was 
um, what is your time worth? Mm-hmm. And it's a recurring theme on this podcast as well, talking about what is your time worth? Yeah. You don't, you, if you don't value your time, you actually show how your, valuable your time is and what you do day to day. So it's really in your hands. Yeah. And um, something I know I made this mistake when I first started out and I still make it every day. Um, but I see other people doing it now in a, in a far worse capacity is they'll say like, oh, I'm going to sell X for $20. Um, not factoring in the three mm-hmm. hours it took them to make that thing yeah. um, just to make a quick buck. Yeah. So now you've taken three away, hours away from your personal life, your, your, probably your family, if you have a family, your, your friends, your, you know, mm-hmm. the people who actually love you and care about you mm-hmm. for $20. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, for me, that, that has been a very important lesson to learn. Um, and we, I'm not sure if you listened to the Nicole Clark episode, but we touched on this a little bit with her as well. And, and something she's always telling me too, like, you need to charge more. <laughs> you're worth more than what you're charging. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just an important lesson. Absolutely. For as you people look to here. do your time study. I mean, when you look at it, charging 400 and you realize you made 20 bucks an hour, is that where you want to be? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a good exercise to do. And, and even with just break even from your time, from the actual profit for or your product that you're selling, most people don't know what their break even is. It's it's hard to figure out. Like, I know we're in the, the baby steps of our business right now, and we're trying to factor out gas and mileage and, you know, your, your vehicle depreciation and all of those things. And you're trying to factor in all of things with your time and, you know, and then it gets more complicated because we're a shipping company. So it's like, you know, you can say I'm charging $20 to deliver this domestically for you. But then what if that person, you know, has multiple items that they need to be sent, right? Mm -hmm. So then you're factoring in the time it's going to take to not just take one piece, but to take five pieces from them. And then we're trying to figure out our break even. We're like, this is exhausting. There are so many factors to figure out how how to figure out what our break even is. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's just break even to zero. Yeah. What do we yeah. start talking about break even for success? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So we have some wonderful tools to help make that really relatively easy. You know, just in, I mean, the break even formula in itself is fixed cost divided into your gross profit margin percent is going to give you a break even to zero. So we can talk about that, says later, that so fast right <laughs> my eyes I've just got really this, big <laughs> i've seen this like whole spreadsheet and i've done it and yeah. that was still like way over my head what you just said <laughs> i was like trying to pick up the words as she was saying them so fast and i'm like okay I, i've heard that i've heard that how does that correlate to that and my brain is trying to like put all the pieces together I'm like, chris is yeah. a fucking pro yeah. she just knows her shit eh yep. <laughs> well, we'll get into it we'll get into shape you and me. yeah excellent yeah <laughs> No problems there, which, uh, you know, good that we're talking about a little bit about break even there. I mean, that's one of the pillars of mastery when we talk about financial or money mastery and, and, um, you know, some of the basics, P&Ls, you know, what are those? Mm -hmm. What use are they? What What are those? those? I mean, I know, but some people may not. (laughs) Yes. Profit and loss statements. So we need to know what's coming in, what's going out, and that's going to help generate our margins. So whether it's for gross profit, fixed expenses, it's really an opportunity analysis of that that's going to help build your business. So big things, balance sheet, you know, where we land for assets, liabilities, um, cash flow, even just predicting cash flow. I mean, understanding what's coming in and out on a constant and what we need to be doing in revenue to be able to do those things, um, investments, and then break even. Those are those are the top ones that we talk about really in, in Money Mastery. And then as we move from there, we get into to much bigger things. So there's, there's a list and there's a book. There's a couple of financial books that everyone should read at this point just to get themselves oh, comfortable. Let's <laughs> talk about it, that at the very end of the episode. We can come back to that because um, we always kind of like to do a, what's your favorite book? kind of thing at the end but um and i'll be sitting there making notes yeah like really she, she's what gonna book? write this shit down <laughs> fair enough yeah and, and as i mentioned you know there's you know the focus in that financial mastery is getting people to understand their break even mm-hmm. so break even to zero the bank cares about but breaking for success is what really matters what do we have cool. coming up that we want to spend if we want to make 50 grand in profit we need to understand what we need to be doing in revenue what that costs us Dang. to do that that is a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. 
So that was just kind of a, you know, one of the pillars there. I don't want to spend, there's four of them. So I'm going to spend more time in destination. And as I said, in time, um, but money that just to kind of think of it that way in delivery mastery, just want to touch on that one. There's four areas of the delivery mastery. Um, we have supply mastery, which is kind of, um, can customers get what they pay for on time, et cetera. There's a lot of questions that come with this. So we'll go through the business quality mastery, looking at the customer complaints. Do they get what they pay for? Sarah and I just had a great ch conversation about too, not to look at customer cl complaints as a bad thing necessarily. It actually gives you an opportunity to take a, a situation and make those people a raving fan and they're not necessarily your bad, you're the bad client or what, you know, that potential, oh my God, this hurts because someone doesn't, isn't happy with what I did. So mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some opportunity there. And that's a, that's such a unique shift in perspective um, that I know personally when something goes wrong with my with a client or with a customer and they're not happy, which rarely happens, by the way. <laughs> um, but when it does, it's like a personal attack on me. Yeah. But when you say it like that, where it's like, no, this is an opportunity that I can turn you into a raving fan by, you know, going that extra mile and doing the extra mm -hmm. things or, or <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> decide that it's just not worth my time. Yeah. Right. You know, there's there's going to be understand, recognize who your ideal client is. Mm -hmm. So is this someone that is an ideal client that we want to make sure or is this someone that really just doesn't fit in our organization and, yeah. and let's move along quickly. So, yeah, that's what my hubby used to say, because he used to work in car sales. And so they're constant rejection and constant issues with customers. And um, you deal with that on a regular basis. And he's like, you get good at it. You get good at convincing people that they don't need to be upset about the situation, that we can always shift things. Things. And he's like, you do. You invest your time in those people that you know are going to come back and continue to be re repeat customers or spend lots of money. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, you would have those salesmen that come in with a view. Well, no, if they're going to be that way. That's it. Like, I don't want to deal with them mm -hmm. ever again. It's inconvenient for me. And he's like, but I would see them and I'd be like, okay, I'll invest some more time into them. Next thing you know, they're buying a hundred thousand dollar truck. And you're like, see, see, it was worth it. But it's that perception, right? Without doing coaching and training and seeing all of that, how many years do you have to invest to actually be in a field that's going to teach you that? Right. Absolutely. True. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we're going to come to books, but I, I'm um, almost through. And I mean, I've, I've kind of rereading it, but the Chris Voss never split the difference. And it actually teaches you to look for the, look for the no first, not the yes. Sales training has always been yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You want that. Actually, you don't win until you get at the no. So you're aiming for the no first. Huh. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blow your mind. So absolutely get out there, read that book. It's pretty amazing so, in, in communication, negotiation, um, in business, in life, in every aspect, because it really teaches you that what you actually can get through a conversation and, and move the dial. I'm looking at Chris right now like a deer in headlights. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm very anxious because I hate reading. <laughs> but I want to read this book. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. He's uh, Chris Voss is one of the, I think he's top FBI agent and blah, blah, blah. And so his has always been in negotiation. So they actually share oh. a lot of it and break down into such a smaller That's... piece that. <gasps> yeah. So when we wow. think of conflict, I mean, I, I used to joke about the customer service because people are like, oh, I, you know, conflict. I, it makes me itchy. It makes me all these things. I don't like it. And I'm like, well, no, it doesn't have to be conflict. It's conversation. Mm -hmm. So how do wow. we move through that? And it gives you a lot of the skills to help you negotiate through that and help everyone, you know, understand where they actually stand and help everyone get to where they need to be. Hmm. Shit. That you is... just blew my mind a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I get to hear it over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the word they use tactical empathy. Oh, think about oh that. Oh my one. God. Tactical empathy. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. So that's some of the quality mastery. We talk about easy to buy, easy to find, easy to see. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I have to laugh. I mean, how many times I've gone to buy something and, and I get caught up like in their payment system of such and it's taking me over here and I'm like, well, I'm something else comes along and I squirrel off into this and, and yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy to buy. It's yeah, that's a problem. Okay. So yeah. some different things to think about. Are we easy to even come back to? Can they find us? Can they, you know, what, what does that look like? Um, when, when you say easy to buy and easy to come back to and all that, are you meaning like, like if they phone and you're not answering your phone, it, that makes it not easy? Like, is it that kind of a thing? Yeah, it can go to that. About? Absolutely. Or, you know, on, on websites where you're trying to like mm -hmm. the buy button yeah, and you have to go to scroll the very bottom of the page. Yeah. 
that can be a problem. Yeah. I UX. think of like user friendly. Like yeah. when you say that, I think of like Superstore. You know how you can go to your past orders and then you can click all the items yeah. you frequently purchase. It makes life so easy and yes. I want to keep reordering. That's right. So cool. that's a very love good good example. I yeah. Never even thought of that one. Well, that's like um, <laughs> <laughs> online shopping now. Well, not just online shopping, but online period like web design stuff is is all about the term UX these days, which stands for user experience. Mm -hmm. So there are actual people who's who are user experience designers. Ooh. And so they have they do think like just as a very um, simple example, they'll put like the back to top button on a website, which oh. not all websites have. And that's annoying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like like you said, like making that um, chain of purchase simpler and easier to follow and so they yeah people's jobs are specifically to make the user experience easier faster that and more cool. enjoyable yeah Fair. well i even think in in just aspects of training like i've seen different training programs that people have put out there and i mean mm -hmm. if you don't use the right word yeah you can't find that and that gets if you're spending 10 minutes just trying to find that one piece of information yeah that's a problem absolutely so when you think of even your teams and the inefficiency in that aspect mm -hmm. making sure that they have access quick access to those and a system of when we need information you start here next is this next is that so we move through it quickly I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it always that reminds me of um you know the comedian Dane Cook Cook. Yeah, <laughs> like he used to be one of my faves, um, and he always had this joke about time travel. And he, I forget how exactly it went, but he's like, "In the future, we'll we'll be able to get to work in like three seconds, and then like something bad will happen in your day, and you'll be like." what the hell I'm not gonna get there for five seconds come on I'm supposed to be here in three seconds <laughs> but it's like it was I mean I'm butchering it obviously but it was a very funny but very insightful joke because mm -hmm. time is so valuable nowadays especially yeah. where like you go on a website and if you don't find what you're looking for in literally it's 10 to 15 brutal. seconds yeah you leave yeah so it it is all about like people are very impatient yeah mm -hmm. in this society at least in our in our culture yeah um so like having that going that extra mile to make sure that things yeah. are happening quickly absolutely can make all the difference and, and i mean the competition yeah online now i mean yeah you you got to be on your game at this point and yeah people's expectations are getting more and more and more what they yeah. expect from the experience so um as i said i, I think what did someone say when you when you go to a hotel 10 years ago mm -hmm. you know what did you want a bed <laughs> we, wanted, right? we wanted access to even the internet now we yeah. want wi-fi for free now we want like and it better be quick and yeah. and so there's just more wants that's coming every year as people develop i guess as we grow and those people that are facilitating that or being aware of it, like what was the statement I heard? Always be proactive, not reactive. Yeah. And those people that are proactive are on the edge and they're, you know, making those profits because people are like, oh, yeah, I never even considered that. Like what was the first one of the first hotels came out with uh, including Netflix in with their you know room room rates and i was like genius mm -hmm. like now i can actually like continue my series without pulling out my laptop in my hotel room i can go right on the tv yeah like whoever thought i'd need that <laughs> right <laughs> but, the little things right? yeah they yeah. all add up and so you know there was you don't have to be the person who comes up with it but boy you better watch your competition who the who the top dogs are and you know what it's a form of flattery do the same yeah it really is or at least come up with something in that aspect um, on the topic of, of being speedy mm -hmm. and um, delivering quick results and that kind of thing, something that you've always taught me from pretty much day one is to stop having email anxiety. <laughs> um, I believe your exact words are, you're not a cat, stop chasing the red dot. Ooh, and, <laughs> that's a good one. And it is something that I still struggle with, but I'm, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we say like, it's important that things are speedy online. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me you don't need to answer your emails the second they come in. 
Please explain. A <laughs> little, little contradictory on yes. that. I think in, in the aspect of, I think it's just having the expectations set and the boundary was is not set for people. So in business, I would like to see instead of you chasing the red dot that they know and understand that they have in 24 hours, they'll hear, they'll hear from you. Cause it's, I mean, it's just not something can, would you expect someone to drop everything every second something came in? True. So I more than anything, it's more about making sure that we have something that people understand. We, we teach people how to treat us. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you don't set those those things up, you're going to find yourself reactive. That's a really valuable piece of advice. Yeah. I like treating people how, what to expect. And yeah, I like that. Yeah. You make a very cute cat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how does that work? Like at the beginning of your business, because you're trying to drum up as much business as you possibly can to ensure that your profits are increasing so that you're able to, you know, actually make a go of it. Like, how do you, you know, set those expectations for people while still making sure that you have excellent customer service and you're strumming up that business and you've got all those, you know, leads coming in? Like, how do you balance those two? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I think that there's a number, you know, taking a look at when we talk about delivery mastery. Mm-hmm. Do are, are all those things set up well that, you know, people, when you think about that boundary, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. But boy, when in that 24 hours, they're going to feel like the most important person in the world at that point. Yeah. Or are you just the next, the next, the next, and we're whipping through them? Right. So, you know, I think there's a difference in experience even in that aspect because you can give them their full time and attention yeah. at that point. So mm. you need to make sure also that your systems are set up properly to do so. Ooh. So when people, you know, get started, yeah, it's it's kind of just like hair back. <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> have no shooting from the hip. We have yeah. no idea, right? And and all of a sudden, right, we, we actually are creating what our business is. Like this is what people are seeing. Uh, and is that what you want? Yeah. Is that why you started this business? So again, this is that thoughtful piece to come back and, and you know, why I like starting with people who get are getting started in business is to really help set them up for this yeah. because you're going to have burnout. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Burnout Check comes that box. Yeah. And we're going to pretend yeah. like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm good. And, you know, we just want to try to avoid some of the, you know, feelings of resentment and, and all the other good things, but it doesn't have to be hard. Right. As, yeah. as I said, you know, being in business should give you more life. Yeah. And that's what I love about Action Coach and Action Edge Business Coaching Mm -hmm. is that it matches one of my biggest culture statements. The thing that I do is all about freedom. Mm -hmm. So whether that's freedom from your thoughts, freedom from things that are not serving you any well, but freedom in your business to do as you choose. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of you not working necessarily in the business, but you get to choose Mm -hmm. what you do every day. Mm -hmm. So before you put that foot on the ground every morning. um, Yeah. Well, I see the benefit of having a coach because... There is so much information overload that happens when you're starting a business. Everybody feels like they need to give you an opinion. There's books out the yin yang about like this and that and everything else. But you give a very like structured, inform, informative approach to how to start a business and how to create profits and, you know, what the key important points of that actually are. Yeah, absolutely. And what I <clears throat> love about... Um, and I guess come from because I used to I had a consulting company prior to this going from, from consulting to coaching coaching I mean there's the education piece there's there's knowledge and, and that share and that structure piece of it but honest it's the coaching piece that is super exciting um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> we're just shuffling some things around here no big deal <laughs> no big deal um, the coaching piece Right. That's something we don't really touch on a lot. And like, what's the difference between consulting versus coaching for you guys? What would you think? Um, I think one would be giving advice. One would be like guiding them along the way to progress, to to be better. Because I think of like a sports coach versus a, a therapy consultant. Like one just has the information. One knows how to use it and how to guide you to success. And a lot of the time. I don't know if this is right, but they're the coaches are the ones that have lived it or they've been in the industry long enough to to guide you through it. Um, yeah, and also I think a consultant is is um nothing against consultants. Consultants no, are not amazing at, at their jobs. Yeah. yeah. But I, I feel like maybe the difference would be that they are more factual and giving you information of what is in their head, whereas a coach spends the time to get to know you and what you're 
all about and then gives you their information that's in their head based off of where you're at yeah and it, and it can be a combination depending who's out there but you know from a, the consulting piece where it's kind of like here's the box and and everyone kind of fits in the box and and there tend to be more integrated in there you know working through the systems you know a coach doesn't run the race for you mm-hmm. they're gonna hug and kick the shit out yeah mm-hmm. can confirm <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have literally i have a folder in my drawer and on my computer called Chris the hard ass. <laughs> That's awesome. And everything that I do with Chris is in one of those two folders. <laughs> oh, it makes my day. <laughs> yeah, just proof I'm living the dream here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I always know when you've had a visit from Chris, because mm-hmm. you are literally just like, you are a machine ready to go. You've yep. been tuned up and you're just like, okay, this is how we're going to approach this. So I'm like, Chris was here with him. She, yeah, like, <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. like every time you come, I am so fired up to do stuff. And then yeah. I like, you know, I get busy and I don't do all the things, but I try to. Mm-hmm. And almost immediately after you leave, I call Shay and I'm like, we need to have a meeting. We need to do this. We need to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So it just like it filters down the chain and you can see the impact of having a really good coach. Yeah. 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 And, and really prioritize, right? Like, what's the next 90 days going to yeah. look like, guys? What do we want to achieve? Because, I mean, we can get, we have all our great visions, in which we'll talk about, I think, at some point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm loving this conversation me too. in that aspect. So, even if we don't, maybe you can just have me back. Uh, oh. It's up to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was, <laughs> this is a <laughs> recurring <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that there's something to say about you know, making sure those 90 days are, are planned and we're, we're priority focused. Where do we want to land? Um, and just, you, th- we have a lot of things because I, I, that's the other thing that coachings understand and, and everyone else is that you still have the business to run. Mm-hmm. So what kind of time frame are we going to, you know, notch out of our calendar to make sure that we're working on the business? And that's really where we come in to make sure we're accountable to those. Um, and yeah, what do you want to achieve? So huge. Absolutely huge, huge, mm-hmm. huge. So, and I and I just want to kind of touch back on the raving fans because we talked about that. We we have like a ladder, so from suspect to raving fan, and and I mean that's something we can go through of maybe another time. But just want to say that, you know, Sarah, a graphically hip, and Shay, you guys have created some amazing raving fans, and I see this. We talked about a VIP membership you guys offer, like yep. So that that's one of the things on that ladder. Which is your your advice too. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you bring you bring information, but it, you you took it and you ran and you made it what it is today. And, and those people who love and respect you. So that is, um, I mean, you can you can introduce anything you want in the world, but if it's not put out properly in the world, or or you're actually not asking for that, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. So, um, you know, between your reviews, um, your customers, and your community. Um, just amazing what you guys have done so you know you you don't just start at suspect to suspect to someone who might be interested in your business or your product and we we almost skip over customer or customers when they buy from you once mm-hmm. and we almost jumped out of getting that raving and raving fans so mm-hmm. you've done a phenomenal job in doing that mm-hmm. and uh yeah keep it you know props to you <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. big highs high fives <laughs> well, thank you absolutely so should we touch? Where do you want to touch? Do you want to touch into? I want to do that vision. Okay. I, that's, yeah. Let's talk like about that vision. Crucial. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We just we talked. I just want to talk briefly about the delivery and the and the um, financial because that's a whole other round. But yeah, let's talk about number one destination mm-hmm. mastery. Mm-hmm. And there's three pieces of that um, vision. Is number one. Number two is goals, and number three is the why. But vision, you know, benefits of a vision. Um, lots of great long term benefits breaks you out of your boundary thinking um, and identifies direction and purpose encourages openness unique and creative solutions um, and results in efficiency and productivity as well and you know honestly guys when I think about it how are you gonna ever show where you're going to your team if you don't have the vision out written out Mm, because I always get that it's up here it's in my head it is yeah (laughs) yeah but you're right you know, and, and when you want to step away for a moment mm-hmm. and are you the only person now that can se- can tell the vision because it's in your head? Well, does that create like a better culture and more like loyalty or is that like the angle that it's supposed to be looking at? But well, you kind of the story is there. People are reading the right. story. They're in it. They're they're seeing it. It's something that they can be reminded of. Yeah. Um, they're working towards something that almost gives purpose yeah. as well, because there's going to be something that vision. And if you don't feel like there is 
can they help add a piece to the vision? Oh, yeah. Like an investment? Like oh, just personal. Just even kind of what they want to see with the company. Ah. Right? It doesn't always have to be out of the business owner's head. I mean, if we're mm-hmm. really team oriented and that's important to us, no reason why we can't. But yeah. your team needs to know where we're going. Yeah. You need to set that GPS for them because they don't know. They're just showing up going, I'm here to do what I'm told to do. Yes. And is that what we're looking for? Because now we're reactive. We're not necessarily projecting forward. We're not thinking of the steps two or three ahead. Yeah. We're doing what's what in the moment at this point in time. So Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> what do you think are some vision killers, you guys? Ooh, I would say, mm-hmm. yeah, like... Um, or even writing your vision. I should be more specific about that when yeah. you think about writing this. Because it's one of the hardest things for people to do is actually write down their vision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the craziest thing. And I, and I get it because, I mean, I was vision boarding last night and I'm going, oh, do I want Maui or Hawaii? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, those are the same. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I would say, like, the hardest part to see is, you know, the vision itself is your lifestyle and how, how can you make everything, how can you make it work? How, how do you... I don't even know where I would start if someone was like, okay, well, what is your vision for your company right now? I'd be like, to make it bigger. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) To like, because I have an idea in my mind, but to relate that to words, I, I think in my mind is I'm stuck to this like idea of what my company is supposed to be like because everybody else has it this way. And I don't want it to be that way because that's not how society is right now. It's shifting. But I don't know how to put that in words. And I don't, yeah. So so maybe it's like a discussion of your like points of di- differentiation. Like what, what does make you different from the other people? And identifying those things. And yeah. We haven't gone through a brand procedure for your new company, by the way. So mm, maybe yeah. we should do yeah. that. <laughs> and, and maybe the vision starts personally. What do you guys want in life? And that's how yeah. you, because that's where I think also people don't understand is that the business that you're building is to give you the life you want. Yes. If we're not clear on the life yes. we want, right? And we want to make exactly. sure that the business isn't running the life. Yeah. So we did like a a, a track. Like I, I showed Sarah. So my hubby is the exact same way. Like he think, likes things very structured and he likes to know what he's working towards. And I'm kind of like, okay, well, if we do this, this, and this, we can like gross this and then we can get this. And then he's like, no, no, that is way too much work. <laughs> like <laughs> you got to simplify it. What are your short term and your long term goals? And I'm like, oh, this takes me back to like high school. Um, but it's true. Like he's like, what's, what's your ultimate goal? And I'm like, to have a farm to have a regenerative farm that like is not only like changes people's perspective of what growing food is like how we can grow it but how it gives back to the environment and then becomes a tourist destination for people to see you can create this at home you can have your own garden wherever you are but how do we go from a shipping company to that right and it's like we have this idea of how the two are connected but how do you put that into words it's so very interesting because I mean, do you see the passion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when she went into what she what she wanted with the farm <laughs> and everything like that? That was yeah. that was amazing. So, and then when you, you hear the business side, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, just some numbers, and we'll put it together and this that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So think of it, you know, think yeah. of your team. Yeah. Which one are they? You know, even though you have your personal vision, there's no reason why that can't be somewhat put in there. Mm-hmm. But what is that that sh- that business going to get you in in that regard, or what's it going to look like in the community? How are you going to view? How is it going to affect your life? It's going to be able to create this freedom. It's going to be able to do those types of. Things. What is it going to do for the people that work with you? Um, and so, really diving into the visual aspect of it, that picture. So we, we need to do some some mining, I think. Yeah, because I can I listen to Sarah talk about her business and. You see that when she's like talking about like where she would like to take things and her growth. And, you know, I I sit there and I'm like, numbers, numbers, numbers. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't care about that. (laughs) Like that's over on the left hand side. (laughs) This is what I want to see. And this is what I want to come from this. And I get it. I get what you see. But also in my business, my identity is completely wrapped up in what I do. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. It isn't. Your your goal is what your identity is, not yes. what you're doing to get yeah. to the goal. Yeah. The business is serving a purpose. It is. Yeah. So, And I think the our business currently right now really does reflect my hubby. Like mm-hmm. he's clean cut, put together, very like 
structured. He is very detailed. And that's how the company looks right now, even though it's in its baby steps, like his colors and his logo and his choices that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. The branding that he's creating is a really good reflection of him. I'm just beside him being like, more money. We need more <laughs> money. <laughs> so it's a little different. I think we met the CFO of this company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like you to get a shirt. Yeah, CFO. 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 Yeah. I'll just walk around. Yeah. Seven L CFO. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Love it. Yeah. And I mean, that there's, I think you nailed it. I mean, he's the vision. He yeah. needs to create that vision and it's not, you can input on it mm -hmm. in what that looks like and what you think, but for him to actually start to write down, you know, I, I, when I read it, I want to be able to feel it, mm -hmm. see it, touch it. I mean, I, one of that, one of my clients, um, you know, she, um, wrote out her vision of the warehouse that she was going to get into. Like they're currently working out of a smaller space and what does it look like? I mean, I was walking through the door as I read this in in my mind and I could feel the velour couch and I could oh. feel the atmosphere of, of this mm, business and yeah. and it was amazing just yeah. the vibe you knew with the team so the team gets the opportunity to see where we're headed and they're excited to get to that yeah and what the possibilities are and what that looks like for their futures because if there's not a vision what is their future for them that is wow yeah so you're just like every detail you're getting right in there right in there ha huh. yeah That's setting good. that gps guys that yes. compass where do you want to go like i've got that rattling around up here mm -hmm. at all times but like to actually write it down and say like i want this color walls and this type of furniture and stuff like that's a whole other level yeah well, we're going to do that next time. Okay. <laughs> so, so now what are the vision killers? Like what, what actually does kill them? Mm. So when, we, <laughs> when we look at um, vision so for killers. for people who aren't watching. Yes. Us, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I tap my head. Um, number one, you're always the number one killer. Mm. Uh, that's yeah. like most things. It's kind of like business. I, you know, I'll be quite blunt. Get the hell out of your own way. Nice. Because that's that's really the only thing that's stopping you between now and that and success so think about that for a second it gave me chills right now because i was just like "Ooh, <laughs> you know we like to think we know it all you don't just, just step aside yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that gets into identity burst um iceberg at that point yeah. i always joke about it. remember seeing that iceberg picture on the wall at a corporation that you worked at yeah there's some right underneath and no one has a clue what it is yeah but there's actually yeah. purpose to it um but you know you think of, of people's beliefs you know, where did those beliefs come from? They're not always yours. You could have you could have adopted a belief, um, you know, such as you think back. If you ever were a kid, you know, maybe you overheard your teacher tell your parents that you weren't great at math. 50-50 yeah. shot. Yeah. You decided to either prove them wrong or just go through the rest of your life saying I'm not very good at math. So taking a look at some of those beliefs, that's what I love about coaching is it's not just business. We get on the personal level because that affects that. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen and change and are those beliefs serving you serving you well um and not to mention you know what do you value do we understand that because that also leads into your beliefs hmm. so That's yeah once powerful. if we can really move those beliefs around and adjust even if just one you know what's one limiting belief that you have or what's one belief you have in business and let's find out if it's limiting or not mm -hmm. so we can move the dial as you were saying that i was thinking um you know you said you're you're the one who's going to kill your beliefs like you're in your own mind and i was thinking okay but there's also like financial limitations for people and there's accommodation limitations for people and and the list goes on but i think you're right ultimately it does come back to your own self and how hard you're willing to get those limitations out of the way because mm -hmm. you're the one doing it right you're you can't i can't depend on anybody else to make that money for me or get that car for me or whatever it is that you need to get to the next step I have to do that absolutely and I think there's a, um, a, a certain kind of person that's built for that stuff mm -hmm. and a certain kind of person that isn't and not that there's anything wrong with either one of those things we need both of those people in this in this world but um, it really is a, a different level of consciousness almost that <laughs> yeah that you have to be on to get those things absolutely and we, we talk about part of the language in what we do is we talk about the point of power and you know are we below or above the point of power so the top is ownership accountability responsibility or you actually can control where you're going mm -hmm. and below is is bad blame excuses denial mm. 
So where are we playing? Who are we blaming? What are our excuses? I mean, our excuses, again, just are only ones that we even run through our head every day as to why we can't do this or we give ourselves. I mean, if you ever get Leadership and Self-Deception, guys, by Arbogen Institute, that's a great book, too. Um, <laughs> write that down. <laughs> <laughs> this entire episode, Chase had her phone in her hand I taking can't. notes. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm trying to be quiet with these silly things, but they're like, <laughs> yeah, there's something yeah. to say. But I mean, you know, when we live above the point or we take a moment to recognize where we are in that point, you either become, you know, either you're going to become the victor and you're going to come out there powerful and feel empowered or you're going to become the victim yeah. so which one do you want to play in and i know that, like i'm not saying that that's an easy thing either because we all have traumas we have life issues yeah. we have things but again you know even just a thought of where you're playing and where you're why you are the way you are mm-hmm. how can you take one thing and take some ownership accountability and responsibility and recognize do you have actually control over it or not if you don't throw it out the door and let's move on because you deserve so much more mm-hmm. in your life yeah it just reminds me of that like like one of my favorite videos to watch and i watch like motivational stuff every morning because it sets i set my intention where am i gonna get done here we go i have to (laughs) like because i think for so many years if you like i when i worked in a municipal industry you're just you're literally like a lab rat you go into work every day you do your job you come home it's good it's structured you get your money your kids are taken care of it's all good but when you get out of that and you're challenged and you don't have something positively set up for you every morning it's literally like you're trying to climb up a mountain and every single pebble is like tripping you or you're just you're floundering and you can't make it to the top it's a serious struggle so but anyways this segment by matthew mcconaughey he was like on there and sometimes you just need it you need it like just swoon she's like oh yeah um but he says it he says it really nicely with his lovely voice but he says it very straightforward and sometimes you just need to hear that where he's Mm -hmm. like he was giving a speech to um, a class of graduating students and he said one piece of advice the world owes you nothing Mm -hmm. nothing so don't act like a victim Mm -hmm. and I'm like yeah that's true that is incredibly true the world absolutely owes me nothing and nobody's going to see my success and nobody's going to see my failures you know people aren't going to care if my business crumbles they're not genuinely but all that success is dependent on you and the steps that you take each day and just like you said if you've got that vision and you know where you're going your mind is going to find ways to get there Mm-hmm. Like I was like, we have no money. I don't know how we're going to get, you know, a second truck. I don't know how we're going to do this. And we get on the computer. We start looking immediately. Well, there's grants that are out there. There's you know, new business grants and there's, you know, there's different avenues that you can. But your mind is trying to find that way. That's right. So I think it's very cool. You're just is, yeah. solve the problem with your own brain and actually take those steps. Right. Yeah. But you also have to already almost be in the mindset to accept that advice that Matthew mm-hmm. McConaughey was giving. Yeah. Like I bet you maybe 30 or 40 percent of those grad students really grasped what yeah. he was saying yeah. and like felt it and will take it and move forward. And the yeah. other, you know, 70 percent were just like, oh, yeah, this is, this is a motivational speech, blah, blah, blah. Let's yeah. carry on. Let's go party. Right. And I was going to say, and it's probably even less than that. It, because yeah. We're just not trained sure. to think that way. Well, yeah. I was going to say, is there a certain point in a person's life where they're more receptive? Like, in your opinion, is it an age or is it like a lifestyle that the person has led that makes them more successful or more receptive to the advice that you're giving? You know, it, it really just depends when people, I mean, it could be people are just fed up. Mm-hmm. You get to a point. Like a rock bottom situation. Yeah, rock yeah. bottom situation. I mean, and, and just so you guys know, like what I do, I'm not a hospital. Like I, I'm yeah. not here to fix anything yeah. by any means. But there comes a point where just people have had enough mm-hmm. in that and, and start to recognize that maybe there's more opportunity. And, and they usually start to in um, looking for ways to get out of this. So, mm-hmm. you know, some of the work that we do as we talk about identity iceberg, that's sort of stuff. People are already kind of open to this aspect of it they're looking to improve themselves they're looking for better skills or they're they're actually that type of person Mm -hmm. people who are stuck below that point and blame excuses and denial will never be in a position that want to be coached Mm. because it's too comfortable this is their comfort zone yeah so i think we're just talking about vision killers yes and i mean we start with the head and and a lot of this has to do with a lot of the stuff on on my kind of my list that i have of vision killers you know um you know, some uh, outside of that naysayers you know we think of the naysayers and in, in uh what we can't do 
um, make sure you look at your group guys and make sure you got some really good people you are the reflection of who you hang around so <laughs> Sorry, oh, great. I am so sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking you. I think there's some other people in my life. Kevin Smith. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> Such a good group. I just love it. Um, <laughs> fatigue leaders can be that vision killer. Mm-hmm. You know, fatigue what, sorry? Leaders. Oh. Fatigued decision fatigue. Mm-hmm. All those types of things. So making sure again that comes into your your scheduling of your life making sure that we're scheduling out time for your wellness because again guys this if you're not fully functioning what what benefit are you to anything that you're doing your family your friends your community your business so um that's that's why that wellness retreat i was talking to you about last night the warrior code retreat that's what that's about i just read something the other day and i saw it on the internet so it must be true um, that said that <laughs> you actually are more productive when you're tired. Interesting. Yeah. And I mean, I don't even remember what the source was, but I was like, I, I don't, I think I call bullshit on that. But also <laughs> late at night when I'm laying in bed, wide awake and everyone else is sleeping, my brain is going like a million miles an hour with ideas and, and like I'm writing shit down in my notes. And so <laughs> Maybe there's a little bit of truth to that. Some conscious, conscious, you know. Yeah. Okay, this probably has thing. no connection to it, but I know like for training dogs, you actually have to work them really, really hard before you can train them. When and, you break oh, down the that's right. resistance. Yes. And it's just <gasps> yeah. like, oh, and you, like there's a lot of like behind the scenes. You still in there create connections through like tug games and all this stuff. But like for our dog, like we had to work him really, really hard to get yeah that definitely that resistance out of the way and I think that's like I've literally I can't even there's so many people that I follow like Ryan Serhant is a good one at 4 30 in the morning he goes to the gym and he works out really 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 hard Mm -hmm. and then he goes home he showers and then he's off to work and he's like it's just my mind is ready it's focused it's you know you need that initial burn in the morning and um but yeah but, but maybe there's a difference there between fatigue and exhaustion or like overwhelmed yeah yeah that's yeah. True. yeah 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 i think so and i love science science changes all the time yeah it does <laughs> every five years they say yeah yeah i went into nursing they're like congratulations like in five years this is going to be irrelevant yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. can, can someone make me a shirt in quotations science I don't know. Yes. I, 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 I totally want one for Christmas. I don't know anybody who makes shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should Google it. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's lots of vision killers that, you know, make it hard for us to think outside mm-hmm. that. So, I mean, you know, setting yourself up in a position where you are comfortable and have the ability, like, you want to set aside time to do this. But, mm-hmm. yeah, the brain type of typically short-term thinking mm-hmm. right if it's kind of like hey i want we, we got to make money mm-hmm. we need to make it now that's gonna that's gonna kind of halt that vision piece so you know setting aside time guys is and you know surround yourself by the things that you love london fogs with oh, oat milk so from good Blend. Listen, oh, so good like i have to say this is my very first london fog experience what do you think what do you think <gasps> Like what magic is in yeah. that cup? I know it's so silly, but it's so good. I know. So good. The, I, That's incredible. But you have to do it with oat milk because I don't know it, it, the, the regular milk first. It's regular TMI, milk. but lactose intolerant. But <laughs> it's like so much better with oat milk too. Just the taste. It's mm-hmm. like I don't know. Yeah. Just something. That's to say. incredible. Yeah. Thank you for bringing these in. Of course, of course. Like, we're we're regulars. Changed. <laughs> I should really invest in blends. The yes. girls down there. <laughs> They see us every like honestly, we, we are in like the back of the line, and you know, Sav and Ash see us, and they're like hot or cold. Oh, that is so. Amazing. When we get up there, like all our stuff <laughs> yeah. is ready to go. It's a, it's just awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I love that that you say that because, in my opinion, that just screams like customer service. Yes, like that does. is that you are a loyal return customer. That's right. I'm a Raven fan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did I not just bring all you? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Guess who's going to buy more London Fogs uh-huh. and go and support that business out Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. It's huge. So, and they're coming out with more VIP. So now we got online. Mm-mm, I get points. That's awesome. Yeah. You probably have like, <clears throat> I would venture a guess that almost all, if not all of your clients are raving fans of yours because strictly mm-hmm. because of yeah. the service you provide and the like the personal like you get right into our heads like how can i not be a raving fan of you 
but you know success what I mean? too it's screaming through her clients like yes. i knew you through sarah but then suddenly i started people being like oh yeah chris 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 i'm like oh my goodness like she's like a celebrity <laughs> but it's like she is the number one business coach in all of canada yeah. by the way well I, I got to correct on that one. Oh. I do appreciate the <laughs> my my goal of business to be number one. Um, Steph, who is on my team as well with Action Edge, mm-hmm. I mean she's a rock star. She was no, like we play in that top twenty five, and we're both aiming for number one. So we're in, we're top twenty five in the world in Canada. I think she's right now. She's she's winning, but you know I like to come in from behind. <laughs> <laughs> but you were number one at one point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I like was, not sorry. long ago. Yeah, not long ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. Last I heard. Then you Steph were. came in and pff, whatever. Steph. Steph's <laughs> awesome too. She's though. I've amazing. taken some of her online courses and she's yeah. She's she's awesome i learned so much from that woman i mean not only is she you know she took on business coaching this last year joined the action edge team but uh carmella uh, marketing out in canmore she started that business and oh. i mean they yeah and awesome. and we got some satellite you know between kimberly and and uh jasper and and all types of people i get to work with that team out there ali shout out to ali whoop, whoop. Woo. Um, <laughs> yeah her the general manager who's uh taking that business to next level so that's awesome yeah. I love how passionate you are about your the people that you work with even. Like you're passionate as fuck about your clients and what you do, but like you Action Edge must just must just have like the most amazing culture because every time I hear you talk about the people you work with, it's just this big smile. Mm-hmm. You can you can see your heart swelling and like you're pumped to talk about it. So, yeah. That's uh they're an amazing company by the sounds of it. They really are. From what I know of them. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I know they have like their free Facebook uh, classes that you can take. Mm-hmm. And they're they have another one coming up because it pops up on my Facebook and it's like, Hey, are you gonna register? I'm like, heck yes. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just they're so informative, but like it's very a very easy delivery when mm-hmm. you're watching it. And I sit there and I just like take notes the entire time. Yeah. It's it makes life super easy because you can set it aside and you can do whatever else you want to do, but it's not one of those classes. It's like if you want to get value out of it, you sit down and, and you, you pay attention. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I like it because I do point form. Yes. Here's top like that's top right. ten things. Boom, 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 boom. Let's yeah. go. Pick one. Let's yep. run. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Because that's what it is. Let's put it into action. Yes. Very cool. I like it. Yeah. Action. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I mean, my clients mean the world to me and, and people in general do. But when we get to invest in one another, it's not just one versus the other. It is we are investing in each other and, and to see people's lives change, mm-hmm. you know, going from the moment of, you know, F, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Did you just say F? I said F. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to edit it out. You don't have to. We can say fuck. Oh. We just press the little explicit button. <laughs> or you well, can say okay. fork nuggets because that's what I say. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> fuck. She's I like, don't no. Want to <laughs> that's actually part of my coaching. I do swear a lot in it because I'm I'm, I'm never yelling. I'm just quite passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. and, and, we, and Fridays are always fucking Friday. Sorry, now I'm off on a tangent. But, ah, um, <laughs> yeah. So always beware if you call me on a Friday. There's It's no holds barred. <laughs> it's fucking bomb Fridays. world. Yeah. It's fucking Fridays. <laughs> I, I, I think we should have <laughs> fucking Fridays here. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, company I worked for for a decade, um, you know, with between franchise and corporate and all that sort of stuff. And the, and we that was the thing that we started, F and Fridays. I oh, love that. Yeah. It's like um, uh, casual Fridays, yeah. but it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Our, our run on casual Fridays is a little bit dumb. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's lots of fun. So, yeah, that's some of the vision killers. I mean, I mean, just even not taking time, setting aside specific time mm-hmm. to do it put your lock yourself in a room or go to sparkling hill and rent a room and and surround yourself that's going to give you that ability to create vision yeah paint whatever you need to do yeah get the creative side last night they had us drawing so we had to like go through our vision of kind of and very specific they want to know you know mind body relationships financials all those sort of things after we did that we actually because they want to start using the opposite side of your brain you had to go over and draw out your vision with the opposite hand that you typically write with. Whoa. So just imagine the change and shift in the brain. It was crazy. Interesting. And it turns out I'm actually not a bad drawer with my left hand. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked. I'm not. No. <laughs> I was. I think you're very good at using both sides of your brain. Well, I sometimes I think I like to I like to play on both. Yeah. I think they um 
something to say. You have to have a little of both. You, you do have to have a certain amount of both, but not everybody excels at, at regularly doing so. Like most people are very left-brained or very right-brained. Mm-hmm. Very few people use both mm-hmm. at I, the same time and often. And I think you do that very well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, interesting that you said I can tell when I'm not using the other side enough. I get irritated. Really? I get, and I need to be creative. So my husband has, you know, I, I used to do, love, I've done a couple of murals in my lifetime and, and um, used to be actually quite creative. And he's like, I, he just bought me art supplies. He's like, get at it, do whatever. So, I mean, sometimes it's just slapping a lot of really thick paint on something. Yep. Um, did pottery in town here, yes. right? And I'm like, yep. oh, I get to chuck clay, I'm in, right? So I get to use the <laughs> physical side and the creative side. And, and um, but yeah, I, I get I get irritated. When I get irritated, it's typically because I'm not using that side enough. Wow, yeah, that's so cool that you're able to identify that. It it took me a while. It probably a year and a half took me before I realized. And so the last six months, I'm just like, okay, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. I have a similar problem because in my in my everyday life, I have to be very creative all day. Mm-hmm. And while I'm passionate about it and I love doing that, I also get very bored of it. Um, not of of what I do, but just of the constant same type of creativity over mm-hmm. and over every day. So like pre COVID, I would I would be like looking for paint nights and like just anything that I can go and do a different type of creative mm-hmm. creativity where I'm not like designing stuff for a purpose. I'm just feeding the creative. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, just letting it flow. It's yeah, that vision yeah. piece, right? Yeah. So Kevin O'Leary was saying that when he was interviewing people, he would always ask them what their hobbies was or what what they did as a hobby. And uh, he's like, I would always hire those people that had a hobby and they were passionate about it and they would tell me about it because it meant that they weren't solely focused on one thing, you know, that they, mm-hmm. I don't want to use that word balance, but they had <laughs> boundaries, <laughs> you know? So, She's a quick study, yeah, folks. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and it was interesting because then I thought about that and I I got myself a guitar and I started like practicing on a regular basis and then I decided the guitar was just, it, you know, it's pretty hard to play when your office is underneath your kid's bedroom. And so I took on video editing and so we started a YouTube channel and we had all this footage. That is an amazing creative outlet, by the way. Like it's just, it's irritating to hear like the same word like 50 times, but once you get that edit piece perfect, (laughs) you're like, oh, this is so good. And you have like your fade in, sorry to put me in like the the early 2000s with my fade in, fade out PowerPoint slides, but it's like- (laughs) Do not tell me you're doing video editing on PowerPoint. (laughs) No, but that's what it reminds me of. Okay. When when you're using Final Cut Pro and it's like fade in, I'm like, oh my Lanta. Like I actually, I seen uh, this, sorry to get off on the, on the side here, but this is super funny. They're actually having game nights now where it's like, who can have the best PowerPoint presentation? And I'm like, I actually want to do this. <laughs> this sounds so good. And they're like, uh, but they're not on topics that you would normally discuss. So, you know, like, that's funny. Who has the best feet? <laughs> I think a couple's retreat where they get you know, the friends bring yes. them over for hours PowerPoints. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like this. Remember the movie Couples Retreat? Yeah. Uh, what's oh, it's been a while it? since I've seen yeah. it. Is Adam Sandler in that movie? No. Oh, um, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they want to get everyone to this retreat, so they do a PowerPoint as to why it's mm-hmm. important, and now they want to have a baby and all these things. Oh my God, yeah. that reminds me of our friend Colton. Remember, so we're at, out for dinner at a uh, uh, JCI Brishy. planning meeting the other night, yeah. and Colton's like, uh, Colton's a good friend of ours. He's a bank manager. I think that's his title, right? Bank Maybe. manager? Anyway. Yeah, I think so, I've met him. Yeah. He yes. um, is like obsessed with spreadsheets, <laughs> and so he recently got married to our good friend Katie, and uh, he created a spreadsheet <laughs> of their like honeymoon. <laughs> we were like cry laughing about this, but he's like, I made it for my parents and our family so they knew where we'd always be and they wouldn't have to bother us. But he's like, at this day, at this time, we'll be in this place in this country. <laughs> He's like obsessed with spreadsheets. It's so funny. Well, I Katie just said he does it in the evening for fun. Yeah, <laughs> like that is excellent. <laughs> so good. Like, She's like she likes to go out and party and you know yeah. drink wine with her friends. And Colton stays home and makes spreadsheets. 
It's his creative side. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny because everybody's joking, laughing about it. I'm like, what kind of spreadsheet? <laughs> I like, actually, it sounds efficient. like, I know so many people who love spreadsheets, but, but like Colton's level of passion is yeah. it's it's next level. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> love him for it, though. Yeah. Oh, man. I tell you, it is a game changer when you learn about pivot tables. Oh, but interesting. Anyway. Pivot! Pivot! <laughs> <laughs> I think we we've done a few pivots in the, in a, even just here. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's been awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So do well, let's tie up some vision I guess at this point. So sure. you know, when you think about creating a a vision, you know, what is our preferred future mm-hmm. at this point in time? So some of the things that we can do is draw on beliefs. As I said, we talked about identity iceberg, mission and environment of the organization. So as I said, identity iceberg, we can do that one day. <laughs> Yep. I could yeah. spend hours on that. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The vision, be positive, inspiring. We want to be able for, for the team to be feeling like they're enrolled and inspired to be a part of it. And uh, do not assume that the system will have the same framework as it does today. So that can be limiting in itself. So does that mean just being more flexible to change or mm-hmm. just? Okay. Oof. Yes. That's a hard because uh, in my mind, it's like you have to release some control. Yes. Like you, you just, you can't. I'm move. out. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like an identity belief thing that yeah. we have going on here. <laughs> control, control, control. What do we have control on? What do we need to have control in? So you're saying, sorry, say the thing, the exact words that you just said. Do not assume that the system will have the same framework as it does today. So by system, you mean vision or is that what we're, we're, because we're still talking talking about vision, In the vision, that sort of stuff as you're creating it. So like when I first made my vivid vision board versus that was earlier this year Mm -hmm. versus where it's at now, that might change is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. When you think of even the other office that you're into here, I mean, the framework, even just in that and way it looks and, and moving forward and software that we're using and mm-hmm. those have all changed true so to think bigger what's the next level out of this thinking of your hip nation studio what's that gonna look like hmm well it's definitely gonna be bigger that's for sure <laughs> oh <laughs> i was like is so huge. tiny <laughs> very very huge <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> i'm thinking big i'm i'm thinking like one day, Joe Rogan, I'm going to be on your <laughs> podcast with Sarah, and we're literally going to be sitting there being like, yes, I know we're like super fans, but yeah, let's have yeah. a casual conversation. Yeah. Oh, my God. I I hope you know <laughs> I would totally fangirl out. I'd be like, so. It would not be graceful. You'd be like, Shana, get out. No, I'd be the one doing that. So yeah, you really want to describe what you guys want in the future and just be specific to each organization. So as you know, we're, we're chatting about here, you're like, oh, I'm adding to the business. So, you know, being very specific, um, you know, getting into how it looks, feels every aspect of it at that point. I think it's harder. Like uh, for me personally, it's hard to sit down and like write down like this is where I want it to go. Like I have, you know, I want to drive a Tesla. That's a goal. Mm-hmm. Um but as far as like where the business is going to go, it's very hard for me to sit down and, and actually predict that future. Mm. Whereas like month to month, I come up with these new ideas because something happened and it that was an answer to that question or, mm-hmm. or a solution to that problem. And that's how that's how I think my business is growing mm. personally. Yeah. Well, I think maybe we have a, the difference between predict and vision. Because we're not looking to predict the future. It's what do we want? Yeah. Okay. What is, what is the big overall, you know, in 10 years from now, we come back to this table. You know, did you achieve the vision that you had set out? Mm-hmm. Is it anywhere near where you thought it oh. could be? So it's it's much bigger on a scale. So are you constantly adjusting that vision um, according to what you see like depending on what your business is based on what society or technology changes or environmental changes are occurring at that time like how if you should be changing this vision how often should you be changing it i have people going from um, a year three years five years three years is kind of that nice mark 
Okay. And and I don't necessarily say change it. I mean, there's going to be changes in that aspect. But when you read through, it's like, okay, well, I understand why that didn't happen. But boy, we we nailed these things. Mm-hmm. That was such an important piece because th- that the vision you're putting things that are important to you. Yeah. And um, you know, you're not necessarily in control over some aspects. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah. We don't have to control over everything, guys. Yeah, yeah that's that's a hard one. But yeah. I, I think of like like Pure Later, for example, that company. Um, and this is no promotion at all. I'm just, I have studied how they started. You know, they started out with a few trucks and look at them now. Like they have certain portions of the country that they have trucks for, they pay them hourly. That's their company. Others, they've contracted out because Mm -hmm. it's easier to cover that area, but they are actually 90% logistics. They don't actually own a whole ton of physical like trucks, right? So you start out as one thing, and in a couple of years, you become something completely different. Like yeah. Amazon. Amazon is completely like product and logistics. They don't have delivery trucks. And that comes back, like for me, that comes back to was that what, did they plan it that way? Or was that a problem came up and they found a solution mm-hmm. and that's how it evolved? I mean, I can't speak for Amazon, but I'm pretty sure they probably had a pretty amazing vision. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure, Amazon. Oh, would. What did they start out? I looked them up. A and bookstore. They, yeah, that's remember right. Remember there when Amazon go. was a bookstore? Yeah. But yeah. you know what's cool about Amazon? If you could pull up Amazon's um, mission statement, Amazon. It's actually from day one. Their Amaz- their their mission statement rings true today, and I I can't remember when Amazon got started. It must be at least ten years ago, when they were a bookstore. Um. But this is oh. something that yeah. Nicole Clark teaches in her mm-hmm. um, business planning class, and she brings up this mission statement. Okay, so it says, We strive to offer our customers the lowest possible prices, the best available selection, and the utmost convenience. Is that the one? Is it the mission statement? Maybe it's the vision statement. Okay, I've got the vision statement here, too. Let's just see. Mm-hmm, blah, blah, blah. Introduction. Money. Ooh. Um, vision statement. Uh, to be Earth's most customer-centric company. Is that the one? Where customers can find and discover anything they might want to buy online. Yep, that's the one. There you go. So, yeah. again, they were the bookstore, but now they are that now they are what they are. And there's Cute. probably not a person on Earth who is of conscious thinking that doesn't know who Amazon is, mm-hmm. yeah. at least in America. Absolutely. But probably globally. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and there's something to say, and to um, about vision versus mission, mm-hmm. because there's there seems to be a lot of different ways you can go with it, and, and this is how we define it simply is the vision. I mean, this vision boarding, this is a different aspect of it, um, but vision within the company, it that's for the customers, so they know where you're going. Right. The mission is for your team, so they know how to get there and give mm-hmm. that. Oh, that's cool. So if you think of Walt Disney, I think theirs is like their vision is like to be the funnest place in the world. Mm -hmm. The happiest place on earth. Happiest place on earth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. My version. (laughs) Yeah. Same thing, really. (laughs) And the mission (laughs) statement is like, blah, 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 all these things and want to. This is how we treat ourselves. This is how we're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. And so I think the vision statement um, never changes or shouldn't ever change, but the mission statement should probably evolve, evolve with the business yeah so my mind has just been blown because i've struggled with mission and vision for years and in one moment i'm like that makes so much sense yeah huh. so when i go through mission and vision statements with my clients i always tell them your mission statement you should revisit at in the beginning annually for sure mm-hmm. As you become, you know, five, ten years down the road, maybe you can stretch that out and, you're, and when, as your mission becomes a little more firm and solid. Yeah. yeah. Well, and to add to the vision statement piece, it, it's for your customer. But, I mean, thinking of it on such a big scale, like in the world forever, hundred years from now kind of vision yes. statement. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is why vision statements are always um, quite broad mm-hmm. and very nonspecific. So to like, be like the best. Amazon, yeah. like Amazon's <laughs> is like to be the best at online sales is essentially mm-hmm. what they're saying. That's very yeah. broad. Yeah. Like they're not saying we're, we want to be the best in the first place you go to buy 
junky shit for fast shipping right like <laughs> fast shipping my ass yeah days, right, right? <laughs> and also i shouldn't say junky know, shit they have a lot way. of good stuff half really? of my office is filled with amazon yeah. so as much and as i hate the, to say the funny it. part about it is like having a contract with amazon is like you get paid per piece not you know so you could have this tiny little envelope and then this massive box and you get paid the same. And it's hard in my mentality. I like to get rid of all like the chunky stuff first because it takes up so much space and then deal with the little stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's not cost effective. It is actually for you. It is a lot cheaper for you to just like figure out where your locations are and then drop mm -hmm. your pieces off in that location, then drive to the next and go. And I'm like, well, I've got like 10 massive boxes in the back and I can't see out my <laughs> rear windows. So right, right. Let's, let's drive to five different locations and drop those off. Like it's not efficient, mm -hmm. but people don't understand that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were right across the street. Why didn't you drop it off? I'm like, because you had a tiny envelope. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah. So kind of when we think, you know, when we tap into vision, not only do we tap into vision, but we also... Um, we, we look at purpose, you know, what drives you to succeed and get results. Values, what's your top five, 10 values to define how you work? These are some of the basic questions. Talent, what are your top three talents and how you express these talents as skills and knowledge on the job? And passion, so what about your work makes you passionate? Does it get you excited to get up in the morning and come to work? So vision is part of it, but there's other pieces to this. Um, and ultimately all of these will help in assessing how specific and clear your vision is for the future and potential development needs, um, your fit with your current role and talents to build upon in order to be more effective in what you do. Hmm. Do you often run into um, clients who, I've heard you use the term passion project mm -hmm. for some certain people, that's not true for everybody, but mm -hmm. do you run into people who, um, maybe not necessarily your clients or maybe they're your mm -hmm. clients who initially have like this massive passion for what they're starting and what they're about to do and then that kind of fades and mm -hmm. they start losing interest and find out that 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 actually isn't their passion mm -hmm. and if so what like do you try and help them r rediscover that passion or do you just say well maybe it's time to to and, hang up the boots yeah that's a good question i i mean it's um it happens and I, and I think it's just, you know, when you OD on your favorite drink mm -hmm. or food or whatever it is, and it takes a while to come back. So, I mean, though, that kind of coaching and moving forward is, is you know, how do we um, separate at that point, making sure that all the pieces in business so they can step away for a while and take a breather, you know, and, and I mean, everything that we do in coaching, as far as I'm concerned, I'm always looking to set you up so that this business is sellable at, at the end, yep. mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not you want to sell it. It is in the best position it can possibly be in. At that point, you can make a choice. Hmm. So they understanding that, they, they see that piece is that by the end of this, they don't have to be involved. They have an opportunity to step away. But yeah, I, I do see passions because they just, they're tired, they're overwhelmed. And that's typically in the beginning. And yeah, that passion is waning. And, and to be able to bring back the excitement when they start seeing things that they always thought they had to be in control of, had they had zero control out of, was just, killing everything for them yeah so um once we really defined what they could control mm -hmm. and focus on and what is the end game and how do we move through this things change hmm. so maybe the passion for that piece isn't as high as it once was because they're now ready to to try on different things but we have the right people in place who have all the passion in the world to take it over from there that's cool and then and so like as as maybe the reason that somebody gets into business is usually because they love what they're doing and they mm -hmm. want to find a way to make money at it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually. Not always. Yeah. Um, but then as, okay, so for me personally, I got into it because I love graphic design. I want to make logos for people and brands and all this stuff and not other, not many other people around me are doing that mm -hmm. full package deal. Um, as I get more into, I'm in my second second year well going into my third year I guess um, I find myself loving the business side of it more than the graphic design side mm -hmm. so for me maybe it's time that I hire a designer to take over that that aspect of it while I still love doing it it's just there's there's other things that are more challenging for me right now that's right so 
I mean, maybe that's a solution for some people who's who are losing their passion at what they're doing that you hire out that part of it to somebody who is passionate about it still yeah and and again thinking about when you have someone in there who's just as passionate about that the conversations start to change too now you now you have someone else to bounce off ideas too mm. it gets maybe you get exciting again but your involvement is a little bit different at that point yep yeah which actually kind of leads into the time mastery piece i was going to talk about yeah are we okay to, yeah, to yeah, move yeah. in? Switch? Which, what are we at for time? One, two, three. That's all right. That's yeah. a good episode. But yeah, let's do okay. it. Let's do time mastery. And then okay. I know you've got stuff that you want to get to today. And yeah, we've got a gala to run tonight. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we could probably spend all day here. We could. I could definitely yes, spend we, we, all day here. Yeah, okay, I'm like guys, absorbing. I, I go quiet just because I'm like <laughs> processing it. Yeah. It's getting to that point where it's like so much information that I'm like, I need to apply this. I need to read this. I need to do yeah. this. Because yeah. it's like. You need to take it in bite-sized chunks, but mm-hmm. it's so valuable. It's yep. like you can sense the game changing. Yeah, it's delicious. true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, well, you actually just talked about that. I think it's the whatever the science is. I don't know if it was in an hour of time. You only absorb 15 minutes of it. Huh. So thinking of that when you do trainings and meetings and so yeah. on. Yeah, people are only getting about 15 out of that. Well, and, it, and the wonderful thing about having the podcast is people can pause it and come yes, back to yeah. it, right? They don't have to sit here and listen for the full two hours or whatever it ends up being. Exactly. What I mean, you think about even right now, what we're going to be talking about and whether how we go every time, we can actually just, you could probably cut and splice, put this on YouTube. Yeah. In itself, <laughs> right? So <laughs> we were just talking about this the other day. Actually, um, our good friend Daryl Richards was in the other day and he, he was, we were talking about lengthy podcasts and he mm-hmm. said, you know, you could take your lengthy podcasts and turn them into more than one episode or take chunks and make them little mini episodes or whatever. I was yeah. like, Daryl, what the fuck? <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. 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 I no, honestly, I like them in 20 minutes because that's my morning listen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So don't tell anyone, but I bring my phone in the bathroom. And that's what I listen to as I get ready yeah. in the washroom. Yeah. So I, d- I do that with Joe Rogan. I know they're like three hours, but because I'm driving around usually a lot. Mm. And so it allows me, I'm stuck there anyways. And I listen, but I, you're right. Like I only walk away with little tidbits here and there of stuff that actually jumped out to me because it is, it's a lot of topics they're talking about, a lot of in-depth stuff. And the only ones that actually stick with me are the ones that are like, they're, heavy subjects Mm -hmm. he had recently on there um a power lifter that is uh what he's a what do you call him the the first gay power lifter he goes by this term interesting and so he's broken into an industry that is is different right and he's Mm -hmm. talking about how he you know uh how his branding is different and how his style is different because of this and how he actually stands out because of an industry that is so attuned to one thing so Mm. this has become his identity but the episodes like that they stick out in your mind but they're shorter (laughs) Uh, you were talking about um being able to take certain aspects of like a really long podcast show and if it's um, more relevant or if it's impactful and like even CBC, as boring as it is sometimes, I really like it because their topics are very current. A lot of like socioeconomic issues and environmental issues and like top news things, but they actually have discussion in like a podcast form. And I find them very impactful that way. So like a segment like this, you know, you're listening to it, but you're going to have to take it back and re-listen to certain sections of it because you know it breaks it down but you have to be paying attention so and it and it reminds me of this quote that's just constantly floating around or maybe rattling around in my brain like all day every day and that quote is um we don't see the world as it is we see it as we are Mm -hmm. and i find like just everyday interactions that I have literally every day I'm thinking about that quote because people often think um, situationally about how it impacts them Mm -hmm. not how it actually is in the world perception is reality yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it really isn't like it it might feel that way but that isn't Mm -hmm. that isn't the whole it's just a bite of the big pie right absolutely yeah anyway a piece of it 
And we were talking about like that perception because, you know, when life gets really challenging and you're like, I can't do this anymore. You know, you got five kids running around the house and everybody has like their their separate needs and all of these things. And, you know, I said to my hubby, I'm like, you know what, babe? Could have been worse. We could have had all five at once. <laughs> you change your perception of it and things aren't that bad. Thank God for TLC to show. Right. <laughs> like every time so I watch I'm, them, I'm like, life is good. Yeah, but what? 12? What? what right. Like, Hard no. Yeah. Hard yeah. no. Yeah. That's how we have a dink's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain a dink's Christmas. <laughs> so oh, man. Yeah. Uh, we have good friends of ours. And, and I mean, my husband and I decided a long time ago we weren't having children and and friends of ours in Kelowna, same same thing. And so um, I love Christmas, but I my idea of a great Christmas is like dumb and dumber <laughs> <coughs> Christmas where he's going, you know, the, the daydream he has, the bad sweaters and the wine and the bad jokes and, and the bad snowsuits. And, <laughs> and so I want to recreate that this year is kind of what I'm looking at. And because we rented a place, um, I think it's Outback's Lakeside Resort, just out of Vernon, just on the Okanagan Lake. And, and so I'm creating this like, we're going to be on the lake. There's going to be bonfires. We're going to do a, sn- a snowmobile tour. And I'm like, I'm looking for the 1980s snowsuits. Yeah. If anyone's got a hookup, please let me know. Bad sweaters. Wa- like, I'm going to do it up. I- and I mean, I almost want to get the teeth and the hair and do the whole, like, dumb and dumber mm-hmm. look. Hell one yes. night. So, yeah, we're we're doing it up. So, yeah, it's a, it's going to be a dinks Christmas this year. <laughs> Double income, no kids. <laughs> <laughs> Double income, no kids, Christmas. I love it. And I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the I first love one. my kids, but you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. We, we figured this might be, you know, that the one of the we always travel back to Saskatchewan. We always go to Alberta. And, and I mean, last year was the first time we actually woke up in our own bed since I think I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. So I'm like, I'm gonna take advantage of this, you know, hopefully next year that things are in a different world. But I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, we're gonna do one more year. It's just us, and let's let's just be dumb. Let's just get it right. We're gonna do it right. That's yeah, it. yeah. That's it. all right, guys. Let's talk about some time mastery. Okay. <clears throat> and I mean, this might this kind of leads into some of the stuff we were talking about. Um, you know, time mastery is you know what is your goal? Is it we got to start there? Is it to do more? Do you want more family time? More biz, More working on the business or less work on the on the tools and when you think of different trades and stuff like that or less admin so really defining what you want when we talk about time Mm -hmm. management and there's there's five five things in time management it's not just what we think because we all have the same amount of time that's what we've heard Mm -hmm. and so it's what you do with it Mm -hmm. and so a we we look at analysis the default diary sarah i know as uh I think played in this is something we did early on. What is that default diary? What does your your day look like? What are you currently doing? And, and, you know, what do you want to be doing? Um, So really to understand the tasks and so we can start to lay out what that looks like. We want to be more efficient. I mean, people people really pride themselves on working 12 hour days when, and I mean, when we look at that, it becomes our identity. We get this ego about it. And I mean, you know, here we are 2021 going into 2022. Is that really something we're going to be proud of that we're, killing ourselves not looking after ourselves not being efficient and effective if you can do it in four hours why wouldn't we Mm -hmm. right yes but also okay so this seems to be almost a movement right now Mm -hmm. and or at least a trend that people are saying like don't take like stop um fantasizing and romanticizing Mm -hmm. working yourself to death Mm -hmm. but also if that's what makes you happy Mm-hmm. And and being a hard worker is something that you value. Then get fucked. I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna love doing it. So yeah. right, we we had this subject. I took a course called Working in a Multi Generational Workforce, and it was like learning how to be a manager that's from the millennial generation, working with boomers and Gen Zs, like you're, and Gen X, because you're kind of in the middle. You're coming up to those management positions you're still young and you don't have a whole ton of experience but how to relate to that and there was literally a moment in this class where there was and I'm I'm going to be completely honest there was only two of us that were in that millennial category so we were totally outnumbered Mm -hmm. and um, we had the boomers say you guys always want to take breaks like you just your work ethic isn't there your goals are not what they should be you have to work hard you have to work Da, 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 da. And they had these like stereotypical expectations of what millennials are like. And I said, excuse me, sir. 
I am 29 years old and I'm in a management position. What do you think that I had to do to get here today? What sacrifices do you think that I had to do to get here today? Just because you lived a lifestyle that led you to success doesn't mean that I'm going to take that same route. I'm still going to get there, but I'm going to get there in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, killing yourself at the job to get that position isn't a requirement now. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely different now that I'm in like a startup position and how much time and effort has to go into building it from the ground up. But this generation is wiser, in my opinion, of how to get from point A to point B without working all the time. So it's the check-in, like Matthew McConaughey in his book, Green Lights, mm -hmm. he talks about how he analyzes different factors of his life and sees which is getting low. And then he's got, I got to give it some attention. Is this getting low? Is my family upset? And I'm like, I really like that and appreciate it because in the new business, I could work day in and day out in my office and never leave. And it sounds awful, but I could do it. Yeah. But I know my family would suffer. I know my friendships would suffer. And is it worth it? So. And I'd probably yell at you and like <laughs> be constantly bugging you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'd probably be like, okay, Sarah, <laughs> fork off, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I, and I, I'd know, be like, I got it. I, I'm hearing what you're saying too, Sarah, in, in the aspect of I don't think it's when it becomes someone's identity and, and their excuse mm -hmm. and you're hearing that sort of stuff, that's when it becomes a problem mm -hmm. because what are we actually doing it for? If your family is good and your life is and you're happy, okay, no problem. Just remember that, you know, what are you missing out on because mm -hmm. of such? There's potentially what you say yes to, you had to say no to something else. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe, maybe not. not. Maybe not. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think it's a judgment in that aspect. I just think it's a little bit of a shift. And I like that we're, we're changing, we're adjusting, we're learning. Um, you know, when I work with people, I'm like, it, you know, 50 years ago, it used to be like, you you should be lucky, you know, be happy that you I gave you a job. Mm -hmm. The yeah. mentality is, is yeah. changing and people, that's why the vision is so important now, because we want to empower and enroll people to want to be a part of this and, and feel like they're part of it um, in that aspect versus like it, your worth is based on your here till whatever time in the morning and yeah. you put the extra time and where you know Shirley gets her job done but she doesn't that's she's not putting an extra four hours that's you know so and so is even though that work may not be great or not or more or whatever it might be so you know just what is the where's the value actually land in this I would rather see someone who is focused efficient understands the vision and can get it done in four hours I got four hours to now move on to an, another project or something else that we could be doing to move the company forward or else we get stuck in this Oh, it took me eight hours to do something that really could have took me four. So just bits and pieces like that. Yeah. Making sure we talk about value of time. And that and that probably goes back to having systems in place, yeah. right? Yeah. Being able to do things efficiently, uh, which doesn't always happen right off off the bat, right? Like you have to, you got to make money to spend money to get those systems in place and, yeah, you know, or spend money to make money to get yeah. those systems in place. <laughs> Yeah. So just out of curiosity, when it comes to like your staff, how do you promote that consistency and efficiency when it comes to time allocation with your own staff? Well, I think, I mean, that all starts with the vision. Okay. It all starts right from the get go. They need to know what they need to do in the, in the marching. Like, here's the vision. This is where we want to end up. What tools do you need to get there? This is part of the delegation piece, which actually... Let's lead into that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Right. That Yay. was natural <laughs> segue. So beautiful. <laughs> so just just kind of a quick um, because there are four things to time mastery. I said analysis. There's self self discipline is such a key piece. And there's planning. You know, if we're going to the moon, how much time would you spend actually planning that trip? Or when you think of flight plans, you know, you typically spend more time in the planning phase mm. more than you do in the flight itself. Yep. So again, when you oh, think of I time love that analysis, right? Right. So then the last one is delegation. And that's the one I wanted to, you know, let play in a little bit. You know, what is delegation? What do you guys think delegation is? <laughs> I, I don't think I'm the right person to answer this question. <laughs> um, I would say it's like you've got your plate of tasks that you have to get completed in a day. And it's taking those tasks and giving them to people that you know will get them done efficiently. Um, and... I don't want to say to your expectations because I'm such a control freak that I'm like, it's like asking my kids to like clean up the living room and kitchen. Although 
lately Ugh. you've been so good at letting go of that control it and is just not it is delegating like, and letting people do their thing and trusting it'll get done as my hubby says it's like petting a cat backwards like it's just not a natural feeling yeah <laughs> but you've been good. very good at it yeah. maybe uh, not out of choice no maybe you're forced to have to be good at it a right lot now, of finger but... magnets <laughs> yes don't like it <laughs> but i know it's good for me it's like working out and eating yeah. healthy yeah. don't like it it's partially in the control aspect but also the trust if mm -hmm. you want your team to work hard for you they got to know you trust them yeah, yeah. if true. you want them to do the things that you want them. so not only vision let's talk about trust let's talk about that aspect of it because if they, people don't feel like they're trusted what effort do you think they're going to put in yeah, yeah for that's sure true. and that's like um it kind of reminds me of like the the micromanager boss right like mm -hmm. oh, if you have God. someone who's constantly looking over your shoulder how do you ever feel trusted mm -hmm. yeah right absolutely that's yeah. that's a kill that's a vision that's killer. a <laughs> delegation <laughs> fail yeah yeah like, right i'll be honest like i quit a job after a short period of time because of that yep like, if you don't trust me in my years, very limited years, but my years of experience, I'm not going to be here. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You, you're paying me to do this job. Let me yeah. do this job. Yeah. yeah. And if, if I make a mistake, then yeah, come talk to me and yeah. spend some time with me if you think you need that, but don't hover. Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. We we always like to go when so when something goes wrong, we like to always go to the person. Mm -hmm. When we're, Where we should really start is, where's the gap? in our system do we have a system number one mm -hmm. number two do they know about the system do they know where to find the system do they know how to use the system is the system not working mm -hmm. we get through a lot of those questions then we go if those are all okay now we think about the person mm -hmm. did we set them up for success ultimately i think um as as a business in my business anyway as a business owner I always blame myself first. Where did I go wrong? Did I not train them right? Did I not spend enough time explaining something? Um, and then if all those boxes check, then I go to like, like you said, was the system, did the system fail us somehow? Was the technology out or down or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And then like you said, lastly, it's the person. That's did right. they not have enough time? Did I not communicate that well enough with them? And yeah. Do they care? Should they be in our organization? Mm. You know, when we start to really recognize those types of pieces, do they have shit going on in their life that we just don't even know about? Maybe we just haven't even paid any attention because we're so busy in our own world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bits and pieces like that. Everything can kind of come to a head. So delegation fails very quickly when we have a lack of belief, lack of trust. When we, when we think about, um, you know, to save money, Right. It's going to cost you more, you know, in your time mm -hmm. than just to say to recruit to put someone in that position. You know, we think about uh, and, and I believe that everyone should be able to do every part they can in business, that sort of thing. But again, we talk about value. Mm -hmm. um, does it make sense for you to be, you know, the person who's design and that sort of thing to be mopping the floors? Yeah. Right. <laughs> or answering the phones. Right. Right. So that's that also is a key piece in this. I agree. Um, I can't tell you how many places that I've worked in my life where I was hired to do a thing and ended up doing yeah. all the other things yeah. mm -hmm. probably mostly on my fault that's my fault for like wanting to be involved and help out mm -hmm. and do what I can right but also like if you're paying me a decent wage is that the wage you want to be paying me to to mop the floors and take out the garbage yeah or do you want to hire that out to a different wage level right that's right yeah. And I think a lot, too, is being perceptive of your employees and actually like knowing who they are, getting to know who they are. And it's it's not like, you know, you're developing a friendship, a work relationship. But once you get to know who they are, I find that you find there are so many creative people that are on your team that are so much bigger than you ever expected. Like I had a crew working for uh, the municipal division that so many of them were in university. And their minds, like what they were going in for, some were really good with like legislative papers or they were going in for lawyers in the future. And like their administrative skills were on point on things that were creating a procedural manual. And they're like, actually, you should word it like this. And I'm like, OK, you're a lifeguard. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is not even your field <laughs> or, you know, you're not you're not in even in my department, but your skills are on point and you don't know that unless you like create relationships and get to know who they are as people they're not just uh, you know a paper pusher they're they're your staff you're investing in them and who they are and 
that personally having that investment makes me want to grow. Yeah. I know that I can go to my boss, wonderful lady, and ask her, <laughs> like, can I do this? Can I do this education course? And it's not like, yeah, for sure, I'll give you time off. No, it's like, I'll pay for it for you. I'll make sure you go there. If that investment is going to make you better in your job or in your life, heck yes. And that investment makes me like feel invested in the company, invested in who I work for. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. And I'd like to say that that's happening in all the businesses. Yeah. It's not. There's something to say about that. When the minute you know that your boss cares is the time you start to care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When people feel appreciated, then then they give it 110, right? That's right. And understood. And what yeah. what was that quote that Jagger said on the last episode? It was like um, the, t the like CEO and the CFO of the yes. company are, are talking and they say, um, yeah. what? well, I don't, the CFO says, well, why should we invest in that person if they're just, what if they leave? And then the CEO says, yeah. what if they, what if you don't and they stay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. There's something to say about that. You know, and, and which again leads kind of that organizational chart. Mm hmm so this is something that typically, you know, isn't necessarily taking into consideration of where we are now in the organization. What does it look like? I mean, you can go from top down, bottom up. I mean, people, however they feel, it doesn't really matter. But where is it at? And to get to our vision, what does it need to look like? Mm -hmm. What positions will we be looking for potentially? Or, you know, when you think about if I'm going to be a, you know, I'm a half a million dollar business now, if I'm going to be a million, well, I'm definitely going to have higher social media out. I'm going to do certain aspects of it. I'm going to have these managers in line. So, you know, you're, you're also building out an organizational chart for that piece. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to build up the organizational chart. But as we look at this, it's we have, you know, people on our bus. So do we have people on our bus? Do we have enough people on our bus? And are those people in the right seat on your bus? Mm -hmm. Because if we're having, we talk about some of the things that are failing, potentially that might even be it as well. Yeah. By doing the organizational chart too, it really allows you to see how many hats you're wearing in your business. Oh yeah. Um, our good friend Holly mm -hmm. the other day told me she was doing a sticky note challenge. Mm -hmm. You know about this? Did yeah. you task her with that? Or actually, was that something uh, she just did? No, actually, uh, I mean, we get to work with Modern Pure, but the uh, franchisor, Lane Martin, set her up with that on one of the calls that we did. And, and yeah, it's awesome. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, just in deciding as, as we're kind of building out the organizational chart, and I mean, this is a good, a great visual, you know, a taster with, with taking it, every task that you do, mm -hmm. write out a sticky note. And so do that for a couple of weeks. And so you can imagine the sticky notes and I mean, good for Holly. She goes out and gets the big paper and we start to actually break up and, and she gets her admin to do hers and she gets the, the key people that are in the office to do the exact same thing as we start to build out. How many positions are we lacking? Yeah. Right. And if we're going to build, I want a GM for this or, or a business development or social media or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you know, wow, that's been on my plate. That's not something I want to be doing. So you start to bring those over and you start to create positions. That's cool. Yeah. That's smart. Isn't it? I like it. And I thought the way that when Holly told me she was doing that, I thought that I'm probably wrong about this. I thought she said she was taking the sticky notes every time, like in a day, every time she started a new task, she'd write a sticky note, even if it was the same task she did 10 minutes ago and put it on her computer screen. I thought that's what she told me, but or maybe that's just what I was envisioning. And I'm like, holy fuck, I wouldn't even be able to see my computer screen <laughs> if I did that. <laughs> maybe maybe she was just the moment, so she didn't lose them or anything like maybe, that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they eventually made it over into kind of like, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. This is my position. And, and yeah, there's a bunch of um, positions that definitely were created out of that. As to, you know, more along the lines of what did she want to be doing within her company? You know, this is, here's now I'm down to this amount of sticky notes. Okay, well. Who's going to take care of this? Yeah, yeah. Right? So really started to build out that organizational chart and actually even build out the business and what it looks like over the next, you know, one to three years. For yeah. sure. And yeah. now she's hiring a DM. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. It's just blown, blown right up. She's and, amazing. Yeah, doing a great job out there. I have to shout out to Holly too because she won an award last night at our local Chamber of Commerce Awards. She won the Young Business Leader of the Year. But the response yeah. from the crowd is what I noticed m yes. most is that you have a young generation that is fighting to be amazing entrepreneurs and they're so driven like 
I, I was told what my 30s would be like, but it's not so you actually reach your 30s. Your 20s is a learning experience in my journey. Mm -hmm. You know, you're learning the world, you're learning the struggles, and in your 30s, you're like, I'm fucking fed up. I am <laughs> done with this shit. I'm going to be the best version of myself. I am going to fight until I have built my empire. And you strive and you work so hard. And you find this group of people that you encircle yourself with that just have those same passions and those same drives and yeah. then you see someone reach that point and literal chills i was just like yes like that yeah. i i walked up to her afterwards and i was like i need a photo with you i'm taking it to my hubby <laughs> and i'm telling her this is who i want to be when i grow up yep. like oh, i am just that that's just right awesome. i'm so right? jazzed like you're so <laughs> driven to just do so much more when you you take those little wins for somebody else and you're yeah. like you're sharing that moment with them and it's beautiful so for our listeners, Chris is also Holly's business coach, so yeah, yeah. I'm sure that Holly would give many accolades to to you, Chris, for where she's at today. Mm -hmm. You guys are so sweet. Yeah, I just made my heart warm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Having a, I, I think it's surreal too. Moment. <laughs> it's just growing. It's it, growing. It grew two sizes larger. Two sizes larger that day. <laughs> I just speaking of the Grinch, I just saw the. I think it, this comes up every Christmas. A little um, meme on Facebook that said, uh, "the the Grinch didn't hate people; he hated Christmas, which is fair." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I res that resonates with me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love or, it. No, it was yeah, my bad. It was the other way around. No, maybe it no, was. no. I think that's it where, is. Yeah, yeah, he hates Christmas. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's good okay. reason. I'm at that time of the year where I'm singing Michael Bublé and I'm like, it's Ew, beginning stop. to feel a lot like fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, like, and I sing it in the car and like the teenagers turn over and they're like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> it's so true. It's just the way it is right now. <laughs> so we, we talk about the organizational chart and that kind of was a great lead into, but you know, one of the other things when it comes to delegation is, you know, do we have a question? culture or do we have a telling culture hmm. <clears throat> how do you think that affects delegation so like in my classes right now they talk about like undoing management and leadership mm -hmm. and one of the classes talks about how society has changed the way that business management is being structured and how we're leaning more to like an open flat platform where it used to be you had your managers or supervisors and that information went from then and trickled down to your employees and now it's kind of like a plateau where you have your managers and your staff on the same and the two interact mm -hmm. is that kind of I haven't seen it in play <laughs> yeah. well, it is here working for graphically hip it is definitely that way but what, what's your yeah well and I guess when I think that because I I I teach a lot of um, leaders on how to coach because mm -hmm. there's training and there's coaching yeah. and coaching comes with questions instead of telling people what to do all the time and, and how that changes this system in itself and how people react to that because now they're part of the team. Yeah. They're not just being told what to do and just the buy-in is unbelievable. I don't know about you, but I hate being told what to do. Yeah, it's... It's literally yeah, yeah. like yeah. sandpaper on my skin. It's yeah. just not. Yeah, good. it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to buck that system. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a pro at bucking that. But uh, you know, you come at me with in a questioning culture. And when I say questioning culture too, is that it's open. Because there are cultures out there that you know companies don't like their employees asking questions, mm -hmm. and that is stifling. That is going to have. That's going to lead to people don't feel valued. They're not going to feel trusted. That sort of stuff. So you know, part of delegation is making sure that we can ask the questions and, and we talk about the questions. Like they need to understand what. So again, what what are we delegating to them? You know, asking for understanding. Does that make sense? Why? does this task need to be done? Mm -hmm. Do they understand that? How and get an agreement. Are we on the same page? Do you see it moving that way? Mm -hmm. How would you, you know, do that aspect versus this is what I want done. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about why trust, trust goes out the door because likely they're not going to do it the way you want because yeah. we have not clearly laid out what the expectations are. We have not engaged in conversation. We have just literally verbal diarrhea and walked away. Oof. Good point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take a look. Do you have a questioning culture? People are scared of questions. Companies guess, get yeah. scared. They don't like being questioned. They look at it as being questioned. It's almost a threat. 
Yeah. But they're yeah. just trying to understand. When you say a questioning culture, do you mean um, like when you're assigning tasks, you do it in question form? Or when you, um, when something goes wrong, do you literally ask a question or do you tell somebody that they fucked up? Is like which one of those is the questioning culture you're referring to? Well, I think it, it goes in both. Okay. Um, you know, questioning culture is just people feel comfortable in communicating, asking questions versus the, mm-hmm. the typical nod. Yeah, I get it. Got it. More more than anything. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, yeah, yeah got I it. got it. <laughs> Should we dig a little deeper into that one? Do you have it? Explain back to me of what you heard. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I mean, because again, everyone's got different perceptions. We don't, they don't, we don't walk around with their vision above our head as to what we want the expected the outcome to be. They can't see it. So, you know, that, that conversation, that communication mm-hmm. is such a key part. And I see com- uh, communication in, in a lot of people's culture. And I'll tell you right now, I, I bet you if you, on a scale of one to 10, ask them what they thought communication was in certain aspects, it'd be pretty low. Hmm. This is something that I struggle with because I realized at a very young age, and when I say young age, I mean like grade nine, grade 10, Mm -hmm. that um, people just really genuinely don't give a shit what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Like they just don't, That's that's a common thing, but most people don't discover that until they're in their 30s or mm-hmm. they're a little more mature and I found that out very young mm-hmm. um, and so now even as a business owner I struggle with like wanting to share my vision and and the things that are important to be a, me about my business even with even with you Shay and mm-hmm. with the rest of my team as well because I just have brainwashed myself to think that people don't care and they won't care well what's that term where you don't think that you are fit for that role or like you like imposter syndrome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that one is crazy that is so hard to fight against yeah yeah Yeah. it is just you have the knowledge and the skill but suddenly you start vocalizing those things and it's like that thing is a mean beast yeah (laughs) it is absolutely but but i know what you're saying yeah, yeah when whether or not people um you know, Karen, I, I mean, that kind of goes back to, you know, the people you have on your bus or they should they be on yeah. your bus? Well, for me personally, yeah. Like, I think I have a really good team mm-hmm. and the, somehow or another, it seems like they do give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I still like I have shit going on up here that I I tell Shay almost everything. And yeah. there's shit up here that she doesn't know because I don't think that she's not subcom, not like coming at it like. I know Shay's not going to care, so I'm not going to tell no, her. No, but I think... <laughs> but, like, subconsciously, I just don't think that to tell you because I don't think that you're going to care. It's just a brainwash situation from, yeah. like like I said, grade nine. Yeah, that's, but it I, sounds I, like a belief on that identity yeah. iceberg that, uh, you know, how does it limit you in your business? Mm, how but, does it limit you with your customers? That, like, imposter syndrome I've heard come from Sarah. Like, sometimes when she's got all these ideas and everything conceptually and she's going out there to the public, like... You know, nobody nobody really needs to know this or should I say this or anything like that I'm like this is a gold mine <laughs> like she came out with this beautiful concept of the juniorpreneur mm-hmm. this is information and the response as soon as you got out there people care what you say they like they want their kids to be invested in their future yeah these are you know I feel like those two things those two concepts kind of go hand in hand do I think I'm good enough for this? Hell yes. <laughs> Just, you know, let people know. And she says to me all the time, well, you got to say it or you got to like tell people what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm driving product out for free to Princeton to donate items. This is something I'm passionate about. I don't feel like I need to broadcast it. I don't care that my business is doing it. We're not profiting from it. That's not my main objective. It's the people that are there, the people that are affected. And it it is like an emotional roller coaster because you see them out there, you see them suffering. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, okay, well, have you put this on your website? Have you let people know? And I'm like, oof. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's a good, good idea to do that. And she's like, you, you need that awareness, but it's getting out of your own head. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People, people care about your message. They care about what you're doing and you know, just do it. Yeah. yeah. Especially if, if they, if it's coming from the heart, they can tell. Yeah. yeah. They know. 
Well, I just I I think the majority is the message that you put out there. Is yeah. I'm like, I'm not sitting out there being like, hey, look what I'm doing. It's like, hey, this is how easy it is to do it. You can do it too. Mm-hmm. That's it. I am. I'm always like, look, look what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But, but yours is different. Yours but is in the beginning, like, I was the same way. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not comfortable like bragging or like you know singing my praises and now it's become something that I almost have to do because I am so committed to my community and you know Sarah's growth I mean this woman who I you know we went (laughs) we went out for coffee she's doing right now (laughs) because uh, you know I wanted I wanted to get to know Sarah on a different level had some some shirt ideas and that's I'm like hey you know what let, let's go and, and chat with her and uh, had to laugh because I think it was later on just even this last year um, you know she, she's like I, I thought you're going to be more professional and I think I led with fuck or something like that I don't That's know awesome. um, along those lines but nowhere near what she thought it was going to be but yeah the language that you were using there was exactly the language when we first start, when I first started talking to you and we started to get to know one another and how it's completely I mean the growth that you've had Sarah is just amazing and so well deserved Um, yeah it's huge awesome and you know even you saying that and my response being thank you that was different nine months ago Mm -hmm. right that was like oh don't don't fucking tell me I'm good at something (laughs) I don't have that kind of confidence it is yeah it's hard it is very hard hard and that's a learned skill to be able to actually appreciate when someone says something good about you yeah well we were at the gala and uh they had a pump up there for the nest which is, you know, Randy Foster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we had done a video segment with him. And I thought that I was going to be on the graphically hip video segment. So I mentally prepared for that. You're going to be up on like the Megatron. <laughs> and I was just like, it's going to be fine. You'll be fine. It'll be over in two seconds. Nobody will care. And I'm sitting there and I have like a sip of water in my mouth. And then I showed up on Randy's on the nest with my face on this. Chair. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just totally mortified. And everybody's like, it's Shayna. And Daryl, like, he's like, oh, you're famous. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I, am just, I literally I could feel my face heating up. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I want to crawl under this table. And it was like, literally like one second of why Shay sitting at a table. Like, it was so mortifying. I was like. I don't oh. care. Like, it's just, yeah. That's hilarious. One of those moments. Well, I think of, um, as I said, I worked for a company for, well, seven seven years of the franchise itself and three with corporate. It was the nar- largest uh, national weight loss chain in Canada. And I had the pleasure of working with the, the most amazing team. We led, we had the Regina location. It was the number one out of 350 stores in Canada. Mm-hmm. Just, just a phenomenal team, phenomenal clients. I mean, that thing was a 1,200 square foot powerhouse. Mm. We had, I was seeing up to 50 clients a day. We're, we're pushing through 250 oh, people a day, helping them wow. achieve their goals. That's a lot. And you can imagine, like, we're, we're talking weight loss, mm. which is the simplistic way of speaking. <laughs> yeah. Weight loss is, you know, like, oh, here's the food program. But we talk about identity iceberg again. You want to talk about all the things that led to here, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you got, you got some 20 year olds talking to what age range. Yes. Our average age range was probably around that 35 to 55 year old. And they're having to yep. work with us. So, you know, I remember going to the conference that, I mean, you know, the, it was always in weather Toronto. I mean, we went to a bunch of different places and we always had lanyards and who we were. And, and, you know, I was pretty proud and the team and all that stuff. And I remember getting in the elevator and I'm in the elevator with like six franchisees huh. and they look down and they see your tag. And I mean, it's a big deal, right? Like, yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm still like, I'm just. I might have been like 26, maybe just a just a young young buck. And what are you doing? Oh my god! Like you're you're rich. Oh my god! And I re- I I didn't know what to do. I'm like, we we, we just have a lot of fun and give a shit. That, that's the only reason why we're successful. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I love awesome. that. And I like ran out as soon as the doors. I'm like, I'm out. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Because it really came down to it. I'm like, it's the same product. It was the same carpet color. It was the same wall paint. It was the same service. It was everything. The difference was the people mm. and the give a shit, ultimately. Yeah. The reason why people came back every time. And, and you know, that's that's this part. And the other part was they were getting results. Mm-hmm. Results so that people will pay for results. Yeah. Yeah. And we just happened that we're cute. So, yeah. Yeah. But there is some. Yeah. I remember that. 
stupid old twenties. But yeah, thirties was great because the mind got better, the body went to shit, but the mind got a lot yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the care gets, drops a little. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I don't know if I didn't have because I've got my little side personal training business. If I didn't have that, yeah, they would probably. Mm. Yeah. It's like people have a level of expectation that if you're teaching fitness, you should probably semi be semi fit. And I'm like, hello, I'm exhausted, but I'm here. <laughs> I haven't eaten in three days because I haven't had time. <laughs> oh, weight loss, one one <laughs> Calorie deficit every day. <laughs> so, you know, to really just end with that, I mean, make sure you educa educate yourself on delegation on those pieces, the, the what, the why, the how, and the agreement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these things lead to not only more personal time, but the opportunity to achieve more, grow your business because you're going to have more time, more effectively improve productivity, efficiency, growth, and development of your team, um, really by showing them trust in their abilities and can take on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So such a key piece. So I, I, I kind of made a note here about like, like I think of Sarah, <laughs> time we spent together mm -hmm. in our takeaways and, um, you know, thinking of Calendly. <laughs> you know, th this woman, she laughs because I check up on her and I go to her Calendly to see that she's booked off time. Yeah. for specific things yeah i remember i remember that day you're like i get a text from chris randomly i haven't seen her or talked to her for like a few weeks and she's like did you did i just see that you booked only specific days of the week to take meetings and i'm Ooh. like bitch are you spying on me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you yeah. were just so proud of me so proud so proud of you in that in that instance so you know i mean that's that's growth for your business you can put time aside and and you start to respect yourself and your boundaries when it comes to these types of things you can still have a very successful business and actually more successful because you can be more focused mm -hmm. i'm moving this forward so and, and that's very much you're seeing that you value your time and then you know brought on shay and all of the others that kind of keep going on. So when we talk about that organizational chart. Yep. It's huge. Huge. So there's lots to speak on in all these wonderful mastery pieces. And, and uh, you know, I get the pleasure of, of really seeing where people are at and, and defining, you know, what what's most important to them. What do they want out of life? Where do they want to go? And, you know, we, we build the map for that. Yeah. Well, we have um, nothing but big plans here. Not that we can really talk about right now, but... <laughs> Um, everything that you're saying I think is going to be incredibly valuable to anybody who listens to this episode mm -hmm. um, I predict that this episode might be our most successful one Yeah, Ooh. this this content is so valuable and um, it really is a testament to your knowledge and and the kind of person you are and the coach that you are and how literally how much you give a shit mm -hmm. like you just said right like it's we just have fun and give a shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else do you want in life? <laughs> it leaves you wanting more. I can tell you that. Like For you're, sure. You, I, I feel like end. you're just kind of skimming the surface. These are these are the names, the steps. This is kind of everything. And now I'm like, okay, well, what's this mean? Like, how do I get further into this? Like, yeah. I just, you want more. Yeah. So that's why I laugh. I, I, I sent you guys the sheet and I was telling Sarah this morning. I'm like, I started going through my, my content. I'm like, oh, shit. It's a lot. We, we can't a have conversation. I got about two hours of content with one of these. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we're going to so scale good. it back. Yeah. And I mean, that that's a, a downfall sometimes of myself. I'll be honest. I want to give a lot yep. when we need very little. I don't know. Yeah. I want all of it. All of it. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> like, that's very, that's yeah. marketing right there. Smart because getting. you're you're giving people the headlines. Yeah. And now they need to come to you to get the, yeah. Yeah. the story. The hug and the kick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like literally, I think the first time we met for the ninety-minute um, se coaching session, yeah. we ended it with a hug, and yeah. that was like our first actual one-on-one -on -one interaction. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that's that's probably my my go-to, and I and live and breathe by. I'm gonna hug and kick the shit out of you all the way through, but just know that I'm always here. Yeah, I got your back because mm -hmm. in, in business, I mean, and I hear it from from every business owner, it's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I got your back. Let's go. Oh, that's What's so that? Uh, my favorite movies. The uh, one of my favorite movies is The Departed. Have you seen that movie with Jack mm -hmm. Nicholson? Probably. And, and, Long time um, ago. Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Wahlberg. Anyway, Jack Nicholson says that famous quote: um, "Heavy is the head that lies the crown," or however that goes. Mm -hmm. Or heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Well, what was your takeaway from all that 
Is that <laughs> we'll call just it one? BFO. <laughs> Blinding flash the obvious. What was the one thing that just popped? A time efficiency is, I feel like, so crucial. Is like, where are you putting your time? And putting down that, like, the sticky note idea is a good one. Mm-hmm. But just like, you know, what what is everything that you're doing? How can you be more efficient with it, I guess? Yeah. That Absolutely. time mastery. Oof. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, it's so hard because, like, I find you don't want to be go, go, go all the time. You want to set those boundaries. And then the kids are like, oh, did you see this new segment on TV? I'm like, I don't have time for that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah. Yeah, it's just, and there's something to say, and we didn't we didn't really get a chance to touch much on it, but self discipline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the other stuff is we think that's the hard part, but the hard part is actually just committing and doing it. Yeah, and, and forcing it, just like the workout. You know, that five a.m. get there, do it. Yeah, self discipline is is what that is taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and everything you take on replaces something else. That's right. <gasps> <laughs> what you say yes to, you have to say no to something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? Well, a lot of this um, I've already heard and know, Mm -hmm. but a lot of it I didn't. And I'm really curious to get into that iceberg Mm. situation, (laughs) the whole iceberg thing. Yeah. (laughs) We'll get you. I'm not talking about Jack and Rose. (laughs) (laughs) That's immediately what came to my mind. Yeah. I was like singing the song. No one needs to drown, guys. No one needs to drown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What about you? What was your takeaway? I mean, you're the <sighs> you're the wise one here. <laughs> you know, for me, it's the takeaway is just to see um, really, I mean, with you, Shay, and kind of where your your business is in the vision. And, and I learned kind of like when you say your husband is the one that's kind of here, I'm like, OK, like if we're struggling with vision, who actually is the visionary yeah. in this piece yeah. and what part do you play? And uh, I mean, Sarah, to kind of for me was to, is the takeaway to just your growth again. Like, I mean, I, I talk about it, but to actually just see it in who you are as a human being. And I mean, showing up this morning, I just, you know, a lap or we're climbing over things because of course this wonderful company here and the girls, Shay and Sarah are, you know, bringing in don- or having donations dropped off, dropped out site for what's happening here in BC and the BC floods. And, um, you know, with the stride, you know, we're, we're pulling chairs, we're doing all the things and, and, uh, because you know what, community is important to this group, and and yep. uh, mm-hmm. it just it shows in every aspect. And when you say we're climbing over things, we are literally, <laughs> literally. climbing over yeah. mountains of donations in the front lobby. Yeah, I, yeah. it was almost when I had to put the chair over my head. Yep. Um, yeah. And these aren't light chairs yeah. either. Yeah. 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 So I was like clearing paths for her. <laughs> yeah. So thankful for you guys, but also thankful for the community of Penticton oh to show oh, up and, right? and be dropping yeah. everything off. It's pretty pretty yeah. amazing. So. Yesterday was a. A very touching day yeah, when all this stuff life arrived. Kicked into high gear, and uh, we went and picked up a ton wow. from them as well. And just yeah, so the surrounding areas. Yeah, are jump everybody. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you reach out to a few public um, entities, and next thing you know, everybody's like, "Yes," and a little bit goes a long way. And it for me, it made it very emotional to know that like if everybody gave a little bit, we'd all have a sufficient mm-hmm. amount. That's crazy. It's absolutely. just such a hard, hard mentality for a lot of people to yeah. grasp, right? Yeah. It's like um, survival yeah. Yeah. mentality, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I went into the grocery store, into Walmart, and I have a lot of children, so I did my normal <laughs> grocery shop, and you should have seen the looks that I was given. I actually said to one lady, because she looked at my cart, and she looked at me, and I was like, don't judge me. I've got like six kids, five of them on a regular basis. So <laughs> this is actually going to last us two weeks. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. It's funny you say that because I had a, um, a client in yesterday who was at the grocery short store shopping for her business, which is a, a local pub. And so she's like feeling incredible guilt about having to go into a grocery mm-hmm. store and fill her cart with the stuff she needs to run the pub yeah. because normally they don't get their stuff from a grocery store but right now they're having to yeah. and so I'm like if that was me I'd be like walking around with a shirt on and a big neon sign I'm like this is for business yeah. I swear <laughs> I'd like plan it out so there was like five stops that day to the same grocery store in different outfits that yeah. people wouldn't recognize yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. we're going to cut this into five yeah. smaller purchases yeah if, if everyone really could take a look I mean you know right, uh, coming back to the identity iceberg again I mean everything we see on top is people's actions and behaviors yeah. and decisions right those are the results and underneath that is is the um, you know skills beliefs values identity and where we land but what we also forget is that water that is on that bottom of that iceberg the pressure yes. our environment 
the current environment of the world right now, a little bit of empathy goes a long way. Yeah. And you know, like yeah. what we consider common sense, we, you know, there, there's just, if everyone can just take a breather mm -hmm. yeah. before reacting, that would, that would be a great start. So, cause everyone's got the same amount of pressure or, and I shouldn't say the same, but varying degrees, but that environment, it's, it's a really rough environment right now. We'll call it that. Yep. So absolutely. Yeah. That's um, awesome. A local artist, Peggy Collins, she's coming to the JCI event tonight. And she, her exhibit right now is currently on shoes. And she made a point of stating that it's based on the pandemic and uh, learning to walk in someone else's shoes. Oh, mm, I just beautiful. get chills. Yeah. I, I love like, it. I love it. Yeah, yeah it's Peggy incredible. Collins is a beautiful human being. And we're so lucky to have her. She's going to come and do a live painting at the event oh, tonight. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So, and then we're going to auction it off. Anyway, she's Lovely. she's incredible. And I love that you said that because she deserves a shout out for that. Well, Absolutely. it's just, you have, you know, impactful statements like that. And it helps you like have a little bit of empathy for somebody else. But yep. yeah. yeah, empathy goes a long way. Yeah. So uh, can I, uh, you want to end with a joke? Well, you got to end with your book recommendation, but I love jokes. So this is like, a, I want both. I want it all. <laughs> oh man, the book recommendations. Can I, can I send a list? Can we do it up that nope. way? Um, uh, yeah, three. you can send me a Top list. Any day. Okay. Um, yes, you can send a list behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I mentioned, you know, one of them, Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. That's a big one. Um, Leadership and Self-Deception by Arbinger um, Institute. That, that speaks to a number of things kind of empathy and the importance of, of, you know, the box that we put people in. Um, Brad Sugars has a massive series, instant, whatever, instant cash flow, instant leads, instant referrals. I mean, that whole line. Yeah. Okay. Easy awesome. reads, story basics, um, very actionable items. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I always plan my Christmas present of what I'm going to get myself because you know I'm a mom and you do everybody right and so I'm like books all the books <laughs> they're going to be like why Why do you get like five presents mom I'll be like because it equates to the same amount as your one mm -hmm. and they're all books yeah I also love the the five minute journal if you guys aren't doing any I, I'm not a big journaling type person I, I feel like um, just not where I want to play but the five minute journal gives you you know what I'm thankful like what I'm grateful for this morning um how to set up my day, how to, what, how would make my day great and, uh, my I am statements. So just a kind of a quick in the morning reminder, good, good way to set up the day intentionally. Yeah. Love I will it. say one of my, one of my, what would make today great was, uh, I want to hear, um, I think it was like five wins from my, from my clients just cause mm. you know, we talk about wins and, uh, I had to, that day was amazing. I had just out of the blue. FaceTime, I had a, um, someone text and then call and and all within that day. It was the coolest thing. That is so awesome. Yeah. So yeah. setting that up. Awesome. Uh, tell us your joke. Yes. Okay, so um, this was from my husband this morning because and, and I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but he went to the Ghostbusters movie last night. Okay. Kelly's like, I fucking love that dude. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ghostbusters is awesome. Um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> How was I not all over that? <laughs> that took me like two seconds and I'm like, oh no, it's grammatical. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Sounds like there's a lot of those good little things in there. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, he was he was uh, getting me prepped for this morning. So he was He's like, oh, this one, this one. I'm like, all right, okay. I'm going to share yep. that one with the girls. Love I it. I like it. That's Love a it. good one. Yeah. Yep. I, I have kids and they tell me they got a joke book for two Christmases ago. And trust me, the echoes are like around the house yep. all the time. They're like, what do you call a... Um, a skunk caught in a revolving door or no what do you say when a skunk is caught in a revolving door and I was like what and they're like oh well you call it black and white and 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 black and white I'm like well then <laughs> <laughs> hashtag kid jokes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if it's not that it's dad jokes though. yeah yeah but I like that one I'm gonna go tell it to the kids when I get home I'm gonna be such a winner I'm like hey guys <laughs> I got one for you. <laughs> oh, man, kids, we, we get out along on a different level. You do. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter just loves you. Yeah. <laughs> just something, I don't know what it is. And I mean, I'm that jerk that's going to be like, so what do you do for work? 
<laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, you, what do you mean you don't work? Like, so you sponge off mom and dad or? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we get into it because I'm like, and they're like, what well, can we watch? And I'm like, why would you watch it? Like, what benefit? Like, what did you learn from that? <laughs> So good. Your brain functions at such a high level of productivity. Like you can just hear it in everything you say. I'm like, yeah, we no, we're not gonna waste time with that. I actually I want to connect you with my five year old because I think you guys will get along. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. I walked in this morning and she's like, Mom, have you seen this music video? She's five years old, yeah. right? And I'm very like conscious. So I like whip over there. I'm like, what are you watching? And it's Toby Key. And she's like, Oh, look, like, like I, I like his voice and the way he sings. <laughs> I'm like, you're five. What five-year-old is like into watching music videos and into Toby Keith? Um, and I'm like gonna fly it. That's next level. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. and her need to meet. I think that that we'd yeah we'd you probably conquer the world in many different areas. Yeah, she, she picks up on everything. I need yeah. you to know because she put on lotion because she had dry hands the other day, and she's like, "Oh, mom, this is freaking cold." I'm like, "Oh my!" <laughs> <laughs> even even so the like, eight-year-old too. The eight-year-old oh, and yeah. Chris need to get together. Mm-hmm. For sure, she's a too. business woman. Like she is ready mm-hmm. to go. Like, okay, I, I'll tell this one last story before we go. But like, she she was at work at her dad's work. And she goes to her dad and she's like, I want to buy a candy bar, but I don't have enough money. So he's like, he pulls out a couple, a little bit of change and he's got like 35 cents. And he's like, this is all I've got. Like, I don't know. You can just play with that. And she's like, okay. And then she goes to another salesman. She's like, is this enough to buy a candy bar? He's like, no, that's not. So mind you, she went around to everybody and she pocketed a little bit each time. And then she got a little bit. She came back with two cans of pop and a few chocolate <laughs> bars. Like, and she is just so, and she was young at this time. I think she was like five or six. Right. Yeah. That's she's um, just good for her. Yeah. She's just, she's, she's one level up of everybody. I've she noticed. is. And my favorite story about her is she was in here one day um, and she come up to me and we were prepping for our grand opening or something. And she was like. She asked me a question and I was like, whatever the answer was. And she's like, why? And she started playing the why game, Yeah. Mm-hmm. but not because she's a little kid, because she's smart mm-hmm. and she knew that it was going to annoy me. Mm-hmm. She literally yeah. knew that. I could it. see it all over her oh, face. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get a kick. Like these are stories. And it, text me the kids stories because I, I have a girlfriend named Sarah in Calgary and, and her little, her son is Rhett, we, but we call him Rhettisms. <laughs> And this is the one I'm going to, I won't share anymore, but this one is, he had been asking for something, whatever is juice or that sort of stuff. And I mean, he's eight years old or something, somewhere around those lines. And maybe he was six at that point in time. And uh, Sarah was walking around and, and trying to get sort of, sort of stuff. And, and he's like, mom, like, I need this, like, get this for me. Yeah. And she's like, I'm coming. He's like, just do your fucking job, mom. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh, man. That's and, you know, and you get to know Sarah. She's the most laid back. She's like, I had to leave the room because I was dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, her husband walks in and he's like, what's going, like, something's yeah. not quite right. And she's like, I had to pull him aside and tell him. And we're just like, I was there, like, just do your fucking job. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, this is my kind of kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So redism. So every yeah. once in a while, usually about once every three or four months, I'll get this. Yeah. Here's the new one for the day. That They're sounds so like, perceptive, though. That sounds guys. very similar to a Hollyism. I yeah. bet you yes. that kid's a high D yeah. on the desk. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Uh, tell people where they can find you. Well, um, I'm in my office on my <laughs> <laughs> You drive by, you can actually see me sitting there most days. That's uh, so funny. Because like, our, friend, our friend and client, Amanda, the other day, I was like, so like, where do you, she was like raving about our podcast. And I'm like, so where do you listen to the oh, podcast? Yes. And she's like, uh, like in my bedroom. And she was like dead serious. And I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to rephrase this question. Because I meant like. Is it Spotify or, or yeah. Apple Podcast, or whatever? <laughs> like in my bedroom. <laughs> that is so good. Well, you can um, Action Edge Business Coaching. Go to the website there. There's actually a lot of um, good aspects on there um, to fill out forms. If you want to know more about it, more about us, kind of learn more about your business and so on. Um, but About Us is on there. Phone numbers, just call the number and, and absolutely. Um, if you need, Sarah's got my number direct as well. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm around. Mm-hmm. I'm easy to find. And sometimes I just pop up and you don't want me there, but I'm there. So <laughs> you're never unwanted. No, no, definitely not. That's a lot of If anything, it's uh you're not here enough. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm also on Facebook. 
Oh, and Instagram. I forgot oh, yeah. about Coach Chris. Right? Yeah, Coach yeah. Chris. Yeah, I'm also That's on those. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Chris with a K. Yes. yes. Yeah, don't mess that up. Rapper named K Dog. <laughs> K Dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're amazing. Yeah, I got all the things. So. I love it. Yeah. Um, thank you again so much for coming, Chris. Yes. This is not the end of your Hip Nation career. <laughs> no, no. Um, as long as you're okay with that, we I'd will definitely have you back. Um, and we appreciate you. I yes. love and appreciate you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank Remember, you. stay hip.